play partner. Yes, sir. Tom James, Tom, you got one school that's getting ready for yeah. district play so they can win a state championship and another school that's not eligible to win a state championship. Another school who's just getting a football program started this year, Schmitty. Uh, the sun getting low and the sky right behind us. The shadows uh, starting to creep across the field. The talent level is going to be sky high in the field, though, tonight. Uh, we could be in for a lot of fireworks here offensively. Trinity Catholic, 3-0. The Celtics are going to collide with 3-0 IMG Academy from Bradenton. It's first year ever playing football at that school. We've got a former Gator quarterback, John Brantley, a head coach on the Trinity sideline, and a former Seminole signal caller and a Heisman Trophy winner, Chris Winky, on the other side as the head coach of the Ascenders. Quality starts at the top and trickles down. It, it certainly does. I'm looking at a uh, newspaper article here. A prediction has this game as close as it can get. IMG 17, Trinity 16. So it looks like it's going to be another barn, borner, barn burner of a football game on the Marion County Friday Night Game of the Week brought to you by the McDonald All-State Agency. I tell you what, they're getting ready to do the uh, pregame uh, prayer and the um, uh, – National anthem. National anthem. Thank you for getting that out. I'm taking in the whole atmosphere sitting here in the stands. <laughs> a, little, a little different. We're usually uh, in a press box type. We're sitting amongst the faithful watching the game. Absolutely. Here. We thought we'd mix it up just a little bit, get a little bit of the flavor on the Trinity Catholic side. We're going to take a we're gonna take a quick break on the pregame show here, and then come back and get you set up for the uh, Marion County High School Game of the Week. With Tom James, I'm Tom Smith, Austin Tatman here with us, taking in the atmosphere here. 7 o'clock kickoff, we're going to get this kicked off here in about 10 minutes. So stick with us, folks. It's the Kevin McDonald All-State Agency, Friday night game of the week. Also, we'd like to thank Star Medical Research as a sponsor. And then a sponsor of the Ocala High School Player of the Game, Ocala, Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson, Ocala, we'd like to thank them, too. Let's take a short break. We'll come back and get you set up for kickoff on the All-State Agency, Marion County High School, Friday night, game of the week, right here. 1970 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Here in Florida, when you're looking to go to the beach, you've got hundreds of options. Theme parks, no shortage of options there either. But when it comes to home insurance, most companies have only one option. Allstate is different. Here in Florida, Allstate agents offer home insurance options from several companies, so they can help you get the coverage that's right for you. And they'll help you save on quality car insurance, too. For starters, safe drivers save 45% with Allstate. So before you settle for just one option, talk to someone with many home and car insurance options. Your local Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? For more information, call the McDonald Agency at 352-622-2333 or visit us online at themcdonaldagency.com. Allstate has no financial responsibility to you for any home insurance policy you purchase and would not be responsible for any claims. Allstate does not make any representations or accept liability related to operations of home insurance companies, including but not limited to their financial conditions. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. Dr. Seaborn Hunt, a board-certified ophthalmologist in Ocala, there's no referral needed for an appointment. Call 873-7200, offering medical services for glaucoma management, including laser surgery to help lower your eye pressure and potentially reduce your dependency on eye drops. He also evaluates and treats diabetic retinopathy, one of the leading causes of blindness with advanced imaging and laser procedure to help prevent vision loss. Dr. Hunt's office accepts most insurance and files claims for you. Call Dr. Hunt at 873-7200. That's 873-7200. Having the motivation and making the commitment to quit smoking is a great first step towards becoming smoke-free. However, anyone who's tried to quit smoking knows how challenging it can be. Having the determination to quit may not be enough. You may need some help. If you're ready to quit smoking and are between the ages of 18 and 75, currently smoke 10 or more cigarettes a day, and can commit to participating for 24 weeks, you may be interested in a research study which is being conducted to evaluate the use of investigational drugs to see if they can aid in individuals and their quest to quit smoking. To help you quit, smoking cessation counseling and all study-related medical care will be provided at no extra cost. You may also be reimbursed for your travel time. To receive more information about this study, how you can participate, please call Renstar Medical Research in Ocala at 352-629-5800. That's Renstar Medical Research in Ocala, 352-629-5800.
Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Hi, this is Lisa Midget, owner of Kinetic Motion Fitness here in Ocala, Florida. A lot of you have experienced our great classes and personal small group training, but did you know we now offer dynamic workouts on DVD? These high quality, locally produced, effective DVD workouts can go where you go. Going on vacation? No problem. We can go with you. Friends and relatives out of town who are jealous that you get to come to KMF? No problem. We ship anywhere in the United States for free. Our great lineup of four DVDs includes Kinetic Achieve, Kinetic Couple, Kinetic Core and Kinetic Campus. Four great workouts for the entire family on DVD. Sound interesting? Check them out on our website at kmfocala.com. While you're there, check out our class schedule and come see us. We're only five minutes from downtown across from the Skylark Plaza. Visit kmfocala.com and like us on Facebook. KMF will get you results at our studio or at home with one of our DVDs. Kinetic Motion Fitness. We're ready when you are. Visit kmfocala.com for more information. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. I want to tell you about a conversation I had recently with General Manager Pat Murray on the great family atmosphere at Country Club of Ocala. It's a family first club. Um, again, we you know we 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 have any number of different types of memberships, but obviously the the, the one that attracts the greatest level of interest is our family. And the reason for that is we have a little something for everybody. I mean, we have we obviously have a world class golf course. Um, we have uh, seven tennis courts here for all levels of uh, tennis players. We have a junior Olympic size swimming pool. We have the uh, we have a fitness center that's that's second to none, and we have state of the art equipment in our fitness center country club of ocala where the facilities are all a family would ever need for more information call today at 352-237-6644 that's 352-237-6644 country club of ocala proud sponsor of monday's gator report and gator talk thursday right here on the source Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm the football your buddy fired through your windshield. The cooler that tumbled out of a pickup and onto the hood of your car. If you're a football fan, eventually we're going to meet. So get all state. Where agents help keep you protected from mayhem. <laughs> like me. Are you in good hands? Hey, this is Kevin McDonald, your local Allstate agent. Call me at 622-2333 and let's make sure you're in good hands. Dr. Seaborn Hunt, a board-certified ophthalmologist, is your comprehensive medical laser and surgical eye care specialist for Marion Lake and Sumter Counties. He offers services for cataract surgery, diabetes, glaucoma, macular degeneration, dry eyes, as well as a routine comprehensive eye exam. Call 873-7200 for an appointment today. No referral needed. Dr. Hunt accepts Medicare as well as most insurance plans and files the claims for you. Dr. Hunt has performed thousands of successful procedures. Call Dr. Hunt at 873-7200. That's 873-7200. 
requires bank approval. Vehicle cards are processed fixed rate allowance. Yahoo! Kids are back in school and report cards are right around the corner. I've got old cars shaking in their boots because I'm flunking clunkers and junkers this month. Hey, Professor Chris Spears from Prestige Auto Sales. What's a smart plan to keep you from flunking out in a car that can't make the grade? This week, trade in and save more. Get the appraised value of your old car plus up to $4,500 off a nicer, newer car. Stuck in bad credit detention? Our For the People credit approval process wants to help everyone, even if you've been turned down before. I vow that no car will be left behind. Visit Prestige Auto Sales today. Yes, during our old car report card event, you'll get up to $4,500 off a nicer, newer car plus the appraised value of your old car. But hurry, my old car report card event ends September 30th or after we've helped 67 students pass the test in a nicer, newer car. My name is Chris Spears, and I'm a dealer for the people. Visit Prestige Auto Sales in Ocala or Bellevue or call 694-1234. Zero Prestige! If you need a sign or a banner for your yard or your business or your campaign, I'd recommend you go to Signs Unlimited at 318 South Magnolia in Ocala. Screen printing, embroidery, digital graphics, do what I did when we needed signs for the Save the Marion Theater Group. Go see Vic Buttermore at Signs Unlimited if you want quality work with a fast turnaround from somebody who is deeply committed to his community and always ready to assist you. There's a reason Vic's slogan is, it's our business to make your business better. Sign up for Signs Unlimited. Call 732-7341 today. Dry, itchy, scaly skin? Do you have psoriasis? Consider joining our research study. Rentstar Medical Research in Ocala is conducting a research study evaluating the effectiveness of investigational combination of two study medications for moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. You may qualify if you're between the ages of 18 and 75 and have been diagnosed with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis for at least six months. For more information, please call Renstar in Ocala at 352-629-5800. Qualified participants may receive study-related medical care and study medication. Compensation for time and travel may also be provided. To find out more information about this psoriasis study, please call Renstar Medical Research at 352-629-5800. That's 352-629-5800. Renstar Medical Research, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Here in Florida, when you're looking to go to the beach, you've got hundreds of options. Theme parks, no shortage of options there either. But when it comes to home insurance, most companies have only one option. Allstate is different. Here in Florida, Allstate agents offer home insurance options from several companies so they can help you get the coverage that's right for you. And they'll help you save on quality car insurance too. For starters, safe drivers save 45% with Allstate. So before you settle for just one option, talk to someone with many home and car insurance options. Your local Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? For more information, call the McDonald Agency at 352-622-2333 or visit us online at themcdonaldagency.com. Allstate has no financial responsibility to you for any home insurance policy you purchase and would not be responsible for any claims. Allstate does not make any representations or accept liability related to operations of home insurance companies, including but not limited to their financial conditions. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. We're back. Sorry about the technical difficulties we've been experiencing. We're back at Celtic Field for the Kevin McDonald Allstate Agency Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week right here on WLCA. As IMG Academy takes on the Trinity Catholic Celtics, I'm joined by Tom James. Tom, about a minute and 50 seconds to go before we get this thing underway. What do we got to look for in this game? Well, a lot of talent on both sides of the field tonight, Tom Schmidt. IMG brings quarterback Michael O'Connor, a Penn State commit, and also running back Bo Scarborough, who's going to Alabama. That's who their big stars are on that side of the field. The Trinity has looked nothing but uber impressive, and it's three wins so far this season. They started the season with that 21-3 win over Calvert Hall. That was up in Baltimore. They're coming off the 43 up and drumming of Gainesville East Side last week. The Celtics are confident that they can send IMG back to the bus with a loss headed south on I-75. What do you think? I, I think the Trinity, I think John, John uh, Brantley, the coach at Trinity, this is the kind of game he lives for. Yeah. It's a game people tell him you can't win. It doesn't look like on paper he should be able to win. He doesn't have a commit going to join uh, Nick Saban in Tuscaloosa. He doesn't have a commit going to play quarterback at Penn State University. All he said today when we talked to him was that, you know, they're stacked, they're loaded, we, we're just going to try to play the game we play. I think he's a lot like Coach Steve Spurrier 
when he's talking about how bad his team is and how he's got no shot, it means just the opposite. Yeah, he had that quiet confidence out of the field. We were down there with uh, both he and uh, IMG head coach Chris Winky, the former Heisman Trophy winner at Florida State, uh, just a few minutes ago before game time. And, uh, Chris Winky, talking to a guy. Yeah, not so much, but uh, I tell you, you can tell, like we said, the quiet confidence with uh, Coach Brantley. He, I don't think he's as uh, intimidated as maybe some other people are in this matchup. Trinity quarterback Reed Carlton is third year as a starter, so this is he's no spring chicken. He knows this offense. He knows about big games like this. In fact, he was nearly perfect last week. He was 12 for 14 through the air with four touchdown passes, and the uh, Celtics can run it. They can also throw it, and they can score points on offense. Defensively, however, the question is, can they stop IMG's decorated attack? You know, how decorated can an attack be when it's your first year of football? Let's be honest. You heard all about IMG, IMG, IMG. It's a first-year program. They don't have a tradition. They don't have a knowledge of winning. They are 3-0. and But what's that mean in a first-year program? I mean, I understand knowledge of winning and all. Yeah. But when you're a brand-new program, you can get tripped up, and that knowledge could go away just as quick. Well, it's it's, a, it's an old uh, adage. You put talent together who's been apart for so long, and uh, it's going to take them a while to gel. Now, it looks like IMG has won the coin toss. The captain is at midfield with the officials. IMG has won and deferred to Trinity Catholic. I will tell you this. The color scheme on the field tonight between these two teams Harkens back to old snot nose football. It's dark green. It's the Celtic green yeah. and gold and the blue and white. There's not a whole lot of there, Phil Knight had nothing to do with these uniforms. <laughs> the Nike guy. Right. This goes back a little further than that, doesn't it? Now we talked about uh, you know being able to stop IMG if you're Trinity Catholic. The defense has struggled a little bit for Trinity uh, in the early going this season. They did make a couple of shifts last week, however, in their their schemes, and they pitched that shutout 44 to nothing. So it may be improving a little bit defensively for Trinity. As, uh, the uh, Celtics are about to break through the banner here, held by the cheerleaders, and here they come. By the way, Buddy Martin earlier today said he didn't really know the mascot of the uh, IMG team. The IMG Ascenders. The Ascenders. They're ascending to greatness, I think is what they're trying to say. <laughs> Well, maybe the Celtics could put that on hold for one night anyways tonight as the uh, Celtics are on the field. 3-0, as we mentioned, Trinity Catholic, 3-0, IMG, 3-0, so a combined 6-0 of these two ball clubs. Uh, and of course, IMG in its first season ever. Celtic Leprechaun looks in a foul mood tonight, doesn't he? <laughs> he really looks like he's a little angry down there on the field. Well, it's not taking him much work to, to, to wave that flag. We've got a pretty stiff breeze out here as the sun is uh, now ducked below treetop level. So we'll see if that wind keeps up or kind of dies down uh, with the sun going down. Well, partner, this is week uh, three, week four. Believe it or not. We're, I'm sure it's so week four. We're about to strap it on and get it on. Yeah, and IMG is going to kick off. Trinity Catholic will receive an IMG in the uh, white jerseys with the blue bottoms and Trinity Catholic all green, all the, the whole dark green tops and bottoms with the gold trim. Here is the kickoff. Fielded at about the three-yard line by Teron Stanley. And he's running near side across the 40, up across the 45-yard line, nearly to midfield. He is taken down and dragged out of bounds right around the 49-yard line. So that's the way you want to start out a football game for Trinity Catholic tonight. He, they, they, so Trinity stayed in their lanes there, turned all the defenders in towards the center of the field, and opened up that sideline where he was able to gash them for a good 35, 40 yards. And remember, these uh, Trinity Catholic players, a lot of them have played together here for a long time, which is something that IMG does not have the luxury of it. Brought a bunch of guys from all over the country and the world to play against each other tonight. The first snap out of the shotgun, and it is a lateral by Reed Carlton, and it goes out of bounds, luckily, for Trinity Catholic. It goes right through the hands of Johnny Taylor, their leading running back on the season, and out of bounds. So. That's a dangerous play, the way it went backwards. Like and, yeah, it was a clear lateral thrown by, uh, thrown by the starting quarterback for the Celtics, Reed Carlton. So it goes off the fingertips of Taylor and out of bounds. And not the kind of start offensively that Trinity would want. That's a loss of about 17 yards on first down. So four wide receivers split wide. Carlton out of the gun once again. He's got pressure on him, and they're going to take him down in the backfield. 
And that's going to be a loss of another three to four yards for Trinity Catholic. So since that opening kickoff, the first two plays from scrimmage, they've been going backwards. Well, let me tell you, though, Reed Carlton there did a very good thing. Reed Carlton locked that ball up in a running back, fullback type basket, and they were ripping that ball, and the third-year starter wasn't letting it come out of there. Yeah. So third down at about 25. The throw far side is caught by Richie Denicola. And Denicola knocked out of bounds. Gain of about six on that play, but well short of the first down for Trinity. So they'll have to kick it away on their opening possession here tonight at Trinity Catholic as IMG Academy from the Bradenton area. Well, it was third down and Highway 200, and they got just short of the mall on that place. It didn't take long to get, get one of those out of you, did it? No. They, you know, it was a long way. So the front team is on the field. It's Denicola who caught that last pass a moment ago, punting it away, and Trinity gets a nice roll wow. on that second hop down inside the 20, down to the 14 before it is down. And so the offensive... Uh, Possession there for Trinity did not go well, but a nice kick. Uh, Denicola got a 48-yard kick out of that one. And uh, about a third of that was after it hit the ground on the roll. So here comes IMG Academy. And, of course, led by the uh, quarterback, Michael O'Connor. And O'Connor, as we mentioned in the pregame show, is committed to Penn State. Behind him in the backfield. Running back Bo Scarborough, and he's committed to Alabama. And they've got some big guys in front of them there on the offensive line. So we'll see what kind of damage IMG can do, and uh, if Trinity is up to the challenge here tonight. And it's O'Connor going to start out of the shotgun with four wide receivers as well. Very similar setup to Trinity's, and he throws across the middle, right in the numbers, and dropped by his wide receiver. That is number 19, Clark Thomas. And he was near the first down marker when that ball hit him. Hit him in a bad spot, partner, right in the numbers. We've seen a lot of drops in the first four weeks of this season. And we're not wasting any time seeing another one tonight. Number 19 there looked more like a cornerback than a wide receiver. (laughs) He may play both ways. So second down and 10 for IMG Academy. The Ascenders up from Bradenton to take on Trinity Catholic tonight. Three wide receivers split left, two more to the right, out of the gun, second down and 10, and a lob pass down the near side, overthrown by O'Connor, but he had his man wide open. That was Scarborough. That's the Alabama commit running a streak out of the backfield. That little wheel route right out of the backfield. Nobody was covering Bo Scarborough, and it's lucky for Trinity Catholic that that pass was about five yards overthrown or that would have been six. So that brings up third down and ten for the Ascenders. So far it's a push, partner. As Michael O'Connor, the quarterback, gets the signal from his head coach, Chris Winky, who knows a little something about playing quarterback, won the Heisman Trophy at Florida State, won with the national championship back in the year 2000. And out of the shotgun again. Four wide out for Connor on third down. And much pressure put on Connor. And he rolls to his right and is brought down. Dragged down at the two-yard line by the Trinity Catholic defense led by Marquise Hendricks, who came into this ball game with 23 tackles on the season, make it 24. Marquise Hendricks throwing O'Connor for a big loss. So uh, you, you mentioned it. Both offenses starting uh, much the same way. Well, I, I think it can safely be said the defense of Trinity not intimidated by the Penn State or Alabama commit. <clears throat> so the butt team is on, and IMG's punter with his heels. Oh, and then a block in the end zone. Oh, the, end zone. Oh, the end zone for a safety. Wow. It's going to say the punter had his heels right on the end line. And was thinking about it. It took a while to try to get that kick off, and it was blocked by two guys. And I think Dominique Brown was one of the ones in there on that blocked kick. Eight of the 11 Trinity players, though, were in the end zone around that punt. Well, that was one you're definitely going to put pressure on, and they blocked it out of the back of the end zone, stuffed that punt. And it's 2 to nothing. Trinity Catholic just like that, and the Celtics will get the ball to top it all off. I think John Brantley's happy with this start. <laughs> I don't think he was happy with the offensive possession, but uh, the way things have turned on defense, yes. The defense not intimidated by this squad. 
No, sir. So that will have IMG Academy going to either kick off or punt from its own 20 after the punt block debacle that has given the Celtics the 2 to nothing lead early. You don't see a whole lot of safeties. You don't see a whole lot of block punts. We've seen two block punts and two safeties already this year. Well, it's early in the season. You see a lot of that stuff in the first half of the season, the earlier stages of the season, the first few weeks anyways, than you do when teams start to gel a little bit more in the latter going. So it looks like IMG is going to kick it off. They're going to see the ball up and kick it off. And number 83, Jackson Dick, the kicker and the punter. He's the guy that had it blocked a moment ago. And here's the kick fielded inside the 20 by Trinity. And a little running room near side. It's Taylor up across the 45, taking out of bounds at around the 47. So a couple of returns by Taylor and a couple of good ones. He's taking them both up right around the 50 yard line. So far, the best offense for Trinity has been kick returns. <laughs> so Trinity this time starts from its own 47-yard line and has a little cushion anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm not calculating he has over 50 yards in return yards already. Sounds about right. All right, this time, Carlton from under center and the handoff goes to... Franklin. Levy. Yeah, Franklin on the carry. Mark Franklin, he's the senior running back. They've had some uh, injury problems in the backfield this year so far as Trinity. So we'll probably see a lot of Franklin tonight. Well, John Bradley told us before the game that two of his running backs injured, offensive linemen injured. He's beat up a little. And here's Carl out of the shotgun, keeping him himself. Uh, keeping it himself. He called his own number all the way right there, Schmidt. He never... Uh, thought about anything else. He picks up about two more yards. That's going to bring a third down and two to go for Trinity Catholic at the IMG 45-yard line. Got about long long two, long three to go. Go on like long two. I like long two to go, but at least unlike their first possession, some positive yardage this time for Trinity. Here's the handoff, number 32, Johnny Taylor, and he's driven back right at the line of scrimmage, and his helmet comes off, too. That means he's got to get a play. He's got to set out a play. So the, the rule in high school, as you mentioned, the helmet comes off. You've got to sit out at least a play. So that'll bring up fourth down for Trinity. I don't see a punter coming on the field yet. Now the, that looks like a punt team is coming out. Punt team is coming out, so it'll be fourth down and two, a, uh, officially a no gain on that carry from Taylor on third down. Looks like a uh, kind of a boxing match where both uh, boxers are throwing some little punches, trying to feel each other out, see what this fight's going to be like. Yep, here's Denicola with the punt. And lifts it high in the air, spiraling, arcing kick, and it is taken on a fair catch at uh, right around the 19-yard line by uh, IMG Academy. So it's good enough in Trinity Catholic as IMG gets its second chance on offense. The first one resulted, of course, in the blocked punt for a safety a few moments ago. They started at the 17 then, the, the 14 then, they're at the 19 now, five yards up. That 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 punt there got above the light tower. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty good hang time. That is a great hang time. Certainly the defense was down there, which caused the fair catch by IMG. I'm telling you, partner, I'm digging sitting in the stands with the band right to our left. A little different. Really gets you to feel a high school football. It definitely does. And here's O'Connor, the quarterback, out of the shotgun, throws far side. The ball is caught over there by number 19, Clark Thomas. Thomas picks up the first down in more. Now, he's the guy that dropped the first down pass on the last possession. All just went in, and they're going to move the chains up to the 47-yard line. A gain of, looks like, uh, a little more than 22, 23 yards on that one. Coach Brantley cannot be happy. The first initial contact was a missed tackle. On a, you got to make those open field tackles to keep the long games from being run against you. We got 19 out wide. Nobody's out here with him. Yeah, Trinity's Trinity playing inside inside hash on the deep on the deep. And he goes across the middle. Does O'Connor, and it's caught by Thomas again across the 40 of Trinity Catholic. Nice catch. He's brought down 
at about the 38-yard line. Dropped it right over the linebacker's head, right in front of the safety in that soft belly of the zone. Casey Gunderson on the catch that time. He's a Sarasota kid, not too far away from. They tried to hurry it up, but the whistles whistles have blown this one dead as they tried to hurry it up. And it looks like that's going to go against Trinity, so moving to get has another five yards for IMG Academy. Offside on Trinity. So here you got a situation, Schmidt. First down and five. Is this one of those things where you send about three guys down and sort of go for it all? This is, this is where you take your shot. First and five, you take your shot here. And a handoff to number six, Scarborough. His first carry of the game for the heralded running back. And he takes it on the far side, down near the 20-yard line, more than enough for a first down. Misdirection draw play there. So we'll be first down and 10 for IMG at the 24-yard line. Looks like Trinity had the same thought we did. They were going to take their shot. Instead, they did the misdirection draw play. Got 15 yards. Hey, we're in a water break right now. Let's take a 30-second timeout. You're listening to Kevin McDonald, All-State Agency, Friday night game of the week on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WLCA, The Source. Mayhem is everywhere. On the football your buddy fired through your windshield. The cooler that tumbled out of a pickup and onto the hood of your car. If you're a football fan, eventually we're going to meet. So get all state. Where agents help keep you protected from mayhem. <laughs> like me. Are you in good hands? Hey, this is Kevin McDonald, your local Allstate agent. Call me at 622-2333 and let's make sure you're in good hands. Much better. We're back on the Marion County Friday Night Game of the Week, brought to you by the McDonald All-State Agency, live from Celtic Field on the campus of Trinity Catholic for IMG versus Trinity Catholic. Back on the play-by-play, here's Tom James. All right, Smitty, thank you very much. We've got first down at 10 for IMG at the Trinity 24-yard line. The Celtics are grabbing the early 2 to nothing lead on the punt block safety on IMG's last possession. Across the middle goes O'Connor, overthrows his man in the end zone. The attendant wide receiver, Jack Wager. That'll bring up second down and ten. That's quarterback Michael O'Connor, Schmitty. Uh, the kid going to Penn State, thrown for uh, coming into this game, already over 530 yards on the season in just three games. He should have had a touchdown there. Ulysses Grant of Trinity got away with a hold on the receiver. The referees missed that one. There you have it. He had a handful of jersey and was pulling him back towards the line of scrimmage. <laughs> so O'Connor, under center this time, two wide receivers, gives it off to Scarborough. It might be Scarborough time, and he is gone. I'll see you in my rear view, boys. Scarborough, 24 yards, nearly untouched, along the far sideline for the touchdown. If that's the kind of running he's going to do for Nick Saban, Alabama doesn't re- – they don't, they don't have to rebuild. They just reload. That looks like Crimson Tide football, and it certainly uh, is IMG Academy football. As both Scarboroughs get down here in the red zone, and they start giving it to him. They passed it most of the way down the field until it got to the 24, and Scarborough did the rest. A 24-yard run for the touchdown. The point after is blocked. And no good. Well, there's three facets of football, offense, defense, and special teams. Trinity's at least winning the special teams right now. Easily. Now, on special teams, it's Trinity 2, IMG Academy nothing. That's two blocks. Two blocks. <laughs> <laughs> they blocked the punt for the statue, and they blocked the extra point now. So 6-2 to two is your baseball as a score here in the first and, quarter. 6-2 to two in the bottom of the seventh, Trinity and IMG. 6.27 left to play here in the first quarter from Trinity Catholic. Still a little breezy here. We expect that to die down some as the sun goes down. Still a little daylight as the uh, sunset has officially happened, but uh, still plenty of dusk. The lights are on here at Trinity Catholic. Trinity's big, their, their biggest offensive place to date has been two kick returns, one for 38 yards and one for 31 yards. Let's see what they get on this return. Johnny Taylor, the man 
deep. And they're going to kick it to him once again. And Taylor takes this one right at the goal line. And across the 10 and goes to his right, up around the 15, weaving his way, trying to get up to the 20 and working hard. He may come up just a little short of the 20-yard line. They got him marked mark right at the 20, partner. All right. He took that at the goal line. So now he's somewhere near 80 yards, 85 yards in total return yards. And we have played half of the first quarter thus far. So quality drive that time. For IMG Academy, they marched at 86 yards in seven plays for the touchdown. 24 yards to camp. 24 yards scamper by Bo Scarborough capped it off. And here is Carlton from under center. Hands it to his running back, Mark Franklin, the up man, the senior fullback. Goes off. The right side. They're going to give him a yard. They're going to give him a yard, partner. Looks like Trinity's going to be called for a penalty there, talking to the IMG captain. We talked about uh, backing them up, and they're backing up Trinity, and this is a big one. Half the distance. They're going to spot this ball down at the nine-yard line. Holding on Trinity. Half the distance to the goal. It's going to be about first and 21. First and 21. They wipe out that run. Take the penalty, does IMG. So it's still first down. It's Carlton under center once again. Looks to his left. Completes the pass. Richie Denicola trying to make his way up the sideline, and he does across the 20. They give it to the 24. It's a nice pickup on first and long. That's 15 yards. Got about six yards now for a first down. That's pretty good. That's yeah. a way to get the penalty back in some positive yards. It certainly makes it a lot more manageable now. It'll bring up second down and six for Trinity Catholic. And Carlton back to his more familiar shotgun with three wide receivers, a man in motion, and he throws it. A little crossing pattern caught there by number five, Rudy Altar. That's going to be a first down, partner. And it is indeed a first down. Here comes Scott Brantley up through the crowd. Look at that, Scott Brantley right here. There's no, there's no, there's no limit to the stars that show up at these games. Certainly, always going to see a pretty hefty Brantley contention here at Trinity Catholic. So first down for Trinity at the 33-yard line, and the handoff this time. It's Mark Franklin again, busting loose up across midfield, and the Celtics are in business. Down to the 47, a nice pickup by Franklin, and he can move the chains into IMG territory. Franklin had a, what do you, what do you have there, bud? That's about a 16 yard pickup. There. That's right. So they are uh, at least one running back uh, down tonight as Trinity Catholic. London Gaskin, who scored a touchdown last week, not playing tonight. And a deep throw this time by Carlton just over the head and out of bounds is attendant wide receiver Altar. Into double coverage. Just under 4.30 left to play here in the first quarter. At Trinity Catholic as the Celtics trail the ascenders of IMG Academy 6-2. We're underway a little early tonight as the uh, kickoff moves up about 30 minutes tonight, Schmitty to 7 o'clock, so that uh, IMG, of course, a long drive back to Bradenton. They wanted to hopefully be back at Bradenton before dawn. Out of the shotgun again, Carlton across the middle, into the slant. Linder's got it. First down and more down inside the 30-yard line. He found the seam to Linder. Linder's dragging defenders with him to get an extra six yards with half the IMG defense, I believe. He was wearing them like a coat. Ball, spot, ball spotted at the 30-yard line. And Trinity. He looked like he'd been at Burlington Coat Factory and bought the IMG defense. <laughs> and a one-step drop and a throw. A little bubble screen out here to the near side. It throws across uh, or over the head of Denicola and out of bounds. Somewhere in Ocala, when you set bubble screen, Ron Zook just smiled. <laughs> we were uh, 
happy enough to have uh, lunch with Coach Zook today. At Good Table times Bank. today. All the high school coaches. Coach John Brantley joined us. Philip Yancey of Bellevue. Uh, Skip Austin of your alma mater, Forest, was there. That's right. Matt, Matt Johnson, Johnson from uh, North Marion. Alex Castaneda of Vanguard. Yep. Five local high school coaches all uh, talking to us here at lunchtime. Here's Carlton. He's got a scramble this time. Going to tuck it under across the 30, down across the 20. What a run by Reed Carlton. He's going to be about a yard short. Oh, they're going to mark him two yards. I don't like that spot, partner. I think they took about a, I think they took a good yard away from Reed on that run. Well, it's going to be a first down either way. They got spotted at the 18. And Carlton uh, had a chance to check off on about one guy before he felt the pressure, tucked it under, and ran it down in, inside the 20. That's a third-year starter right there with that clock in his head on when to get out of the backfield. Out of the shotgun, he hands it off to Franklin. And Franklin gets a lot of the carries. Across to the 15. They mark it right at the 15. They give him a three-yard gain there. Looks, looks like Franklin's going to get the uh, majority of work at running back tonight. Well, this season, uh, they really looked at Johnny Taylor, London Gaskin, and Mark Franklin as their really three main guys in the backfield. And Gaskin not playing tonight. Taylor returning kickoffs, and it's Franklin has done the – Bulk of the work in the backfield, and a whistle blows on looks the snap. Like, looks like we're going to have a, a false start. So this will back Trinity up five yards and make it second down at about 12. Big 77, the right tackle decided he wanted to go a little early in the snap count. That's frowned on in Florida High School. So second down and 12 will be the situation on Trinity's first trip into the red zone tonight. And look for Reed Carlton. He's his first guy he's going to look to, Richie Denicola. Caught two touchdowns last week. Let's see if he does. And intercepted at the 10-yard line. The ball picked off and knocked out of bounds. And they're going to be a label on Trinity at about the 35-yard line. And adding insult to injury is a hit after the Reed Carlton got over and pushed the guy out. The guy was one step out of bounds. It was it's very hard for an offensive player to pull up when he sees a guy running down the sideline. He hit him with one foot out of bounds, and that's going to be a personal foul. But that was really a hard call by by the referees because it's hard to pull up on that kind of situation. And Voshan Crumby was the... Guy with the interception right there as uh, Carlton looked, took a two-step drop, looked to the near sideline and underthrew it, underthrew badly on his uh, wide receiver who was still running up the field. And Crumby was right there, turned around and picked that football off at right around the ten-yard line. So with the penalty, IMG will start this possession at its own 49-yard line, just shy of midfield, and it's O'Connor. Out of the shotgun. Scarborough next to him. Four wide receivers. He's going to air it out near sideline and stretching out for that one, but unable to haul it in is Casey Gunderson. Down about the 20-yard line. He had a step on his defender. And that'll bring up second down and 10. Nice arm uh, from O'Connor right there. Just let it an extra half a step too much. Trying to hit a home run right there on first down. So again, two wide receivers split to the left, two to the right. And O'Connor will operate out of the shotgun on second down. And whistles blow, whistles blow. Whistles blow. Let's see what we're going to have. Going to be a false start on IMG. So that'll back the ascenders up five yards and make it second down and 15 at their own 44-yard line. Tough break for Trinity Catholic. They were knocking on the door, put together a terrific drive down the field into the red zone, down inside the 20-yard line, and then the penalty backed them up five yards, and that was immediately followed by the interception Reed Carlton picked off by Crumpy of IMG Academy, and that killed the drive. And so here is IMG, second down and 15 from its own 44. Again, four wideouts. 
O'Connor out of the gun. Throws far side, and the wide receiver, boy, that was awful close as to whether he was hit before the ball got there, but no flags come out. And Gunderson, who was the intended wide receiver for IMG. That's bang, bang, partner. I'm glad I wasn't down on the field having to make that call. That was bang, bang. Coming up third down, 15. So third down and 15. That play could have went either way, partner. And IMG now on third and long. Four defensive linemen for Trinity this time. O'Connor out of the shotgun. Looks across the middle. And overthrows his wide receiver. And Trinity nearly picked that one off. You are not holding. You're going to have a holding. Yeah, they will, uh, they'll wave that penalty off, Will Trinity. Uh, Big 72 for IMG. Patrick Minuti. He, uh, he had a chokehold on uh, the Trinity Catholic number 14. And Minuti, one of a uh, number of players from Canada. He had Jordan Wood in a headlock, so that's the penalty there. So... IMG's punt team on the field, ready to launch this one. And Robbie LaBille gets this one away, and a nice roll inside the 10-yard line down to about the 9. So the last time LaBille was in the game to kick it away, it was in his own end zone, and he had it blocked for the safety. So that's a that's a certainly a victory for him to be able to get that one off. So Trinity Catholic will start at its own Nine-yard line. Well, Trinity, down to 10. Trinity showed they could move the football. Yep. Now can they punch it in the end zone? Yeah, and they also showed they could finally stop it as well. So, Six to two is your score. IMG Academy on top of Trinity Catholic. Here at the Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week, presented by the McDonald Allstate Agency. I'd like to thank our fine sponsors, the McDonald Allstate Agency, Rinstar Medical Research, and our player of the game sponsor, Harley Davidson of Ocala. So back under center is Carlton. And he hands off, it looks like Franklin. And stopped in the backfield. Looks like that's going to be about a six yard loss. Check that out. Johnny Taylor on the carry that time. And they'll spot the football at the five yard line. And that'll bring up second down at 14. Loss of four on the play for Trinity. We talked about some of the players. Uh, on the IMG roster uh, from Canada. In fact, this was an incredibly international roster. We'll talk about that more in a few moments. Here's Carlton. Will screen pass to the near side. It is caught. A great run after the catch by Dominic Brown. Up to the 14. And that'll make it third down and five, which is obviously a much more manageable, manageable situation once again for Trinity. After putting themselves in a little bit of a hole right there. Andrew Smith, number five, on the top. Third down, and we'll call it long four. So third and four. Carlton out of the gun. Looking far side, and he is brought down and smothered right around the five-yard line. Never had a chance, did Carlton, to even look at his wide receivers that time. Well, John Brantley did hint that he had some blocking issues on that offensive line. And I believe he said uh, in the uh, today at the Gateway uh, Athletic Club that uh, his kids didn't block last week and they won in a landslide against each side. <laughs> Might not be this easy uh, this time around. So that'll be the last play of the first quarter. And Trinity will punt it away on the other end of the field when we come back. 6-2, to two, IMG leading Trinity. Let's take a 30-second timeout. You're listening to the Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week presented by the McDonald All-State Agency. You're listening to it on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Here in Florida, when you're looking to go to the beach, you've got hundreds of options. Theme parks, no shortage of options there either. But when it comes to home insurance, most companies have only one option. Allstate is different. Here in Florida, Allstate agents offer home insurance options from several companies so they can help you get the coverage that's right for you. And they'll help you save on quality car insurance, too. For starters, safe drivers save 45% with Allstate. 
So before you settle for just one option, talk to someone with many home and car insurance options. Your local Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? For more information, call the McDonald Agency at 352-622-2333 or visit us online at themcdonaldagency.com. Allstate has no financial responsibility to you for any home insurance policy you purchase and would not be responsible for any claims. Allstate does not make any representations or accept liability related to operations of home insurance companies, including but not limited to their financial conditions. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. We're back on the Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week, presented by the McDonald Allstate Agency. Here's Tom James. All right, the kick is in the air and away. Denicola has fielded at the 41-yard line by number four, Crumby. And he is still alive on the far sideline, down to about the 20 and maybe inside the 20-yard line. Great return by Crumby. They're going to mark it right at the 20. That's a 24-yard return. Vashad Crumby, who picked off Reed Carlton there in the first quarter when Trinity Catholic was threatening, now returns this punt down to the 20-yard line, and it's given O'Connor and Scarborough a short field for IMG Academy, who already leads it 6-2. to two. So here in the second quarter, IMG moving from right to left on your radio, right to left. Three wide receivers for the ascenders. Two running backs in the backfield, and O'Connor hands to Scarborough, dances to his right, back up the middle, picked up maybe four, so that'll bring up second down and six. They'll give him five on that, Schmidt. That's a generous spot right there, so it'll be only second and five. I thought he was brought down around the 16, but what the heck, they spotted at the 15. So second and five for the ascenders. Again, three wideouts. O'Connor operating out of the shotgun. Gives off to his fullback, number three, Jack Wager. And Wager takes it across the 10-yard line and out of bounds. Wager should have been stopped in the backfield by Angelus Bias, but he missed a tackle three yards deep in the backfield. So first down at 10. Check that first and goal at the six-yard line for IMG Academy. Man, I can't help but to imagine this is the time when you start giving it to Mr. Scarborough. But not to be. O'Connor drops back to pass, looking at the end zone, overthrown, and incomplete. The flag on the play. Holding on IMG Academy. It's going to back him up 10, partner. So he overthrew Thomas, the intended wide receiver, but it uh, won't, won't matter anyways. And that gives uh, Trinity's defense a little bit of room to breathe as that football gets marched 15 yards back from the 6 all the way to the 21, but it's still first and goal. 15-yard penalty. They, they marked that a long way back. They marked 15 yards off for holding there, partner. Yep. <laughs> So three wide outs once again as O'Connor waits for the snap, fakes the handoff to Scarborough, goes across the middle, and he's caught for a moment, and then dropped. What a hit by Trinity Catholic. Eliza Robinson saved the touchdown right there as that pass was caught right at the goal line by Gunderson. Partner, if this would have been the NFL, He'd got a 15-yard penalty flag. He'd be fined $40,000 and maybe suspended a game for that breakup of the pass. Boy, that was a terrific hit by Robinson. Why would Robinson charge that football loose? Gunderson caught it, took about a step, and it was ready to put that second foot down, and he was hit by Robinson. The ball popped out incomplete. So here it is, second and goal to 21. Back to throw again. O'Connor, little screen pass. It's Scarborough with plenty of room to run, and all the way to the end zone for the touchdown was never touched. That's the old Percy Harvin slash Reggie Bush type play where you dump your athlete, get into space, dump it off to him right in front of the right in front of the line of scrimmage, and let him run. 
And that's exactly what they did. 21 yards on the touchdown connection. O'Connor to Scarborough. And wait a we wait on the extra point. It's 12 to 2, IMG Academy. Here's the kick. It is up and it is good. So it's 13 to 2. IMG has come to Trinity Catholic and in the early stages here in the second quarter has taken a double digit lead on the Celtics thanks to the touchdown pass from O'Connor to Bo Scarborough. Dumped it off and let Bo do the rest. Insurance can be tricky. Not if you have insurance with the Kevin McDonald Agency. Call the McDonald Agency for all your insurance needs at 352-622-2333. That's 352-622-2333. Do you want to help find answers to tomorrow's medical questions today? Rinstar Medical Research is doing just that. If you want to be part of important medical studies with Rimstar, call 352-629-5800 for more information. And now back on the McDonald Agency Friday Night Game of the Week, here's Tom James. Tom Smith, thank you. 13-2 to is your score. IMG Academy on top of Trinity Catholic as the defenders get set to kick it off. 10-17 left to play here in the second quarter. And here is the kick. And way over the head of the return man and out of, out of the back of the end zone. So Trinity will start at the 20-yard line. A little wind dated partner. That was way over the head of Johnny Taylor that time. He's had a couple of nice returns here tonight. Certainly didn't get a chance at it at that time. So here comes the Trinity offense once again. Reed Carlton, the third-year starter at quarterback for the Celtics. The uh, Celtics drove it down inside the 20. Last time out against the Ascenders. But then the uh, interception by Crumby as he picked off Carlton. Stalled that drive. Out of the shotgun this time. Four wide receivers. And dumped off in a monster hit. That time on Johnny Taylor. And yeah, Taylor gets right up, but wow. He was hit, he by, was number, wow. he was hit by number 29. It's uh, Jamorian Hill from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Boy, he delivered quite a blow right that, that time to Taylor. That's a message to there. Mm. That may call some alligator arms later. Yes, sir. So second down and ten. And Carlton back to throw once again. Looking over the middle across the 35, caught by number 11, Nick Mazurko, at the 38-yard line, and that's good enough for the first down. Again, uh, Carlton found the seam there and found Mazurko at the 38 and moved the chains for the Celtics. He just threw that right down the seam. The, the, oh, the linebackers have stayed in the middle. Now there's going to be a penalty marker, and it's going a little farther. So it looks like it's going to be a personal foul. What was good news for Trinity is now great news for Trinity. Rubbing the passer. So Carlton delivered that great throw under duress. And so there's a first down at their own 38-yard line, and they move it ahead 15 yards to the IMG 47, where they'll start first down at 10. And again, it's complete to the near side and out of bounds. It's Pazurko once again, down inside the 40. They'll mark it at the 37. That's what they got to have, just a little bit of confidence that they can actually move the ball and they can get right back in this football game. So a little bit short of the first down. It'll be second down and one. Gain of nine on that play. Our uh, esteemed intern had used his rear end to turn you down. <laughs> Can you really blame him, Schmitty? No, I, I'm not faulting him. <laughs> Here's the handoff. Johnny Taylor across the 35. That'll be good enough for the first down. So move the chains once again. Give Johnny Taylor. Taylor three yards on that for the first down. Huh? They'll mark it at the 34. Three-yard total there for Johnny Taylor. 
We talked about the roster of uh, IMG Academy. They've got players from all over the country and all over the world. Canada, Sweden, Mexico, Japan, and Hong Kong, among other places. Only one local kid from Bradenton on the entire roster. Here's Carlton out of the shotgun once again. Throws it just out of the reach of number 19, Mark Franklin. Had the screen set up beautifully and just led him a little too far. That would have ate up a big chunk of real estate. Reed Carlton just threw it a little too far. Just off his fingertips. And that's... uh, Franklin, Franklin was in the right place had he hauled that in, as you mentioned. Would have picked up a nice chunk of yardage. Instead, it's second down and 10 from the 34. IMG Academy leading Trinity 13 to 2 with 9.21 to play in the half. And Carlton this time back up under center with three wide receivers and one man in motion. And he gives uh, to Taylor. Well, I tell you, IMG, IMG just made a great play. There's a flag on the play. They, they did a great field there. They did a run blitz right into the handoff. They stuffed it right at the line of scrimmage. And the flag fell out inadvertently because they picked it up and didn't even acknowledge that there was a flag. Yeah. So no gain in that time from Johnny Taylor. Third and ten. Two wide receivers split left. Two to the right. Three down linemen for IMG. And Mark Franklin in the backfield. We're going to have a false start. That will go against Trinity. We're going to have a false start against Trinity. And they're running a three-man front, but they're sneaking that rover up to the line of scrimmage right before the snap. And the rover's coming off the edge. Sometimes it comes off the left edge. Sometimes it comes off the right edge. But they're sneaking him up right at the snap of the ball. So it's giving Reed Carlton the 3-4 read when they're actually playing a 4-3 read. Very difficult for the running back to pick up that rover when they sneak him up on the line of scrimmage right there towards the uh, snap of the ball. So third down and 15 for Trinity Catholic. Again, four targets out there for Carlton. They come on the all out got tons of pressure, but Carlton is able to pick up good yardage. Knocked out of bounds. Oh, hit out of the 30. Well, that was close. That was close to a hit out of bounds. I don't. Referee was right there. Maybe he had a better angle at it than I did. But they're asking where the flag was on the Trinity sideline. There is no flag, and this is going to bring up an interesting decision here for head coach Johnny Brantley at 8.05 left in the second quarter. They trail it by 11, and it's from the 20 down. Yeah, it's fourth and really a long three, almost four yards at the 27. And they've got to get across the 25 for the first down. No thought of a punt or a field goal. They're going for it. Well, you're into the wind, so a field goal doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But you can't punt the ball. And Carlton keeping it himself and throwing it wildly into the air. An ill-advised pitch back, and it is scooped up by IMG Academy. Partner, let me tell you, you just saw a three-year starter make a freshman mistake. Andrew Smith comes up with it for IMG Academy. and Well, what can you say? Carlton it, uh, kept it himself that time, and I think he got to the point where he picked up maybe half of what he needed and was being taken down and saw the corner of his eyes running back and decided to wildly try to pitch it back to him, and it never had a chance. He caught his running back out of his corner of his eye. Only problem was running back was 17 yards away from him. (laughs) So another turnover. That's two so far in the first half for Trinity. Gives it back to IMG, who already leads it 13-2. to And the handoff, it's Scarborough on the end around. It picks up about three yards. Gilbert on the tackle for Catholic. That's just a killer the way Reed Carlson threw that ball away there. Well, he'll be thinking about that all night, wanting that one back. Well, that's what he's got to do. He's got to put it out of his head and move on to the next offensive series. That's where quarterbacks need to have short memories. Tom Brantley coming over to uh, where his quarterback's sitting 
This is a coachable moment. John Bradley's over there coaching him. And the long pass lobbed down the near side and well overthrown uh, down there in the direction of Scarborough. But he was covered well by Dominic Brown. So O'Connor did the smart thing and really let that one through it away. You like to see what John Brantley did just in, though. He went over to Reed Carlson, gave him some coaching talk, gave him this coachable moment about decision-making, and now he's back walking the sidelines. That's a good point. Of course, John Brantley, a quarterback, a couple of state titles at Forest in the 70s, went on to be the starting quarterback of the Gators after that. And here is O'Connor going to keep it himself and slide across midfield down to about the 48-yard line. You think they keep that at the academy? That, that right there was a college or NFL move to take that hook slide like you're going into second base there. Not something you see a quarterback yeah. do very often at the high school level. And it's fourth and one. And he's going to give to Scarborough. And Trinity, it looks like they've got him as they push him out of bounds short of a first down. That is a big boost defensively right there for Trinity Catholics. As the uh, all-everything running back, Bo Scarborough, was given the football at fourth and one, and he's dropped for a loss. They strung that out well, and it's Trinity's ball going the other way. And a big ovation from the Trinity side of the Field. They need a little, they needed a little bit of a momentum boost in the worst way at that time. That's the Trinity defense. It. That's the Trinity defense picking up their teammate Reed Carlson. Yep. So Carlton, we got a official timeout for the water break. We got a timeout with 6:58 on the clock. Let's get a 30-second timeout. You're listening to the Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week, brought to you by the Kevin McDonald All State Agency on WOCA, the Source. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm the football your buddy fired through your windshield. The cooler that tumbled out of a pickup and onto the hood of your car. If you're a football fan. Eventually, we're going to meet. So get all state. Where agents help keep you protected from mayhem. <laughs> like me. Are you in good hands? Hey, this is Kevin McDonald, your local all state agent. Call me at 622 2333 and let's make sure you're in good hands. We're back on the Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week. We're to you by the Kevin McDonald All State Agency here at Celtic Field on the campus of Trinity Catholic. Here's the play by play. Tom James. All right. Thank you, Tom Schmitz. Got a couple of early score updates from around Marion County. The rest of these games starting a half hour later than this one, of course. Gainesville East Side leading Bellevue 7 0. Gainesville on top of Lake Weir 3 0. And North Marion's grabbed a 7 0 lead over Swanee. Here's O'Connor going to air it out. He's got his man and just across the outstretched ends of Rudy Altar. Reed Carlton had him. Got to make that catch down there, don't you, Smitty? you, you got to make that catch. Reed Carlton throws a great ball, hits him in stride in the hands, goes right through the hands to the ground. you got to make that play for your quarterback. And it's the quarterback who obviously had the big mistake at the end of the last drive, threw a beautiful pass right on target that time. Altar just not able to hold in. This time it's thrown a lateral across the far side, and that's three times they've done that play. Tips. Yep, and it's the, they've had the same result all three times. Johnny Taylor not able to come up with that one, so that'll bring up third down and 18, eight yard loss on that lateral. So Trinity, trailing it 13 to two. Third and 18. 6:48 to play, first half. Four wide receivers. Here's Carlton, and he is leveled in the backfield. Making the top Schroeder. And Schroeder, two gets him. Fred Schroeder. Doesn't that sound like a 50 sitcom guy? <laughs> Fred Schroeder. <laughs> they want Schroeder. Well, uh, Schroeder. Knocked Carlton to the ground right there in the backfield. That's going to bring up fourth down. And 
about 24. So Denicola is on to punt it for the Celtics. That's 15 in the game. That's Reed Carlton putting the ball. So not Denicola. It is Carlton. You're right. Denicola, and it's partially blocked. Lands right around the 50-yard line, rolls for a couple of yards into IMG territory, and is down at about the 48. Yeah, that was Reed Carlson, not yeah, Denicola. Denicola had front of the first couple of times for Trinity, and that time the quarterback, Carlton, just got it away. It was partially blocked. Could have been a lot worse. Nonetheless, IMG Academy will start with a first down and 10 at their own 48-yard line. With 5.56 left to play here in the first half. IMG moving right to left along your radio dial. Leading it 13-2. to two. As O'Connor from under center. Hands off to Scarborough. Dances a little bit to his right. Dragging tacklers down to the 45-yard line. Gain of about six that time. Actually got to mark him at about the 46. Why don't they put it right on the 45? Scarborough came into this game with 474 yards rushing in three games. He averaged 9.9 yards a carry coming into this game. It's going to be second and a long three. Nearly a first down every time he touches it. So Michael O'Connor out of the shotgun once again. Three wide receivers. And hands to his fullback. And nothing doing that time. That's going to be a loss of a good five-plus. Terrific job by the Trinity Catholic defense. Led by number nine. It was Ulysses Gilbert. In on the tackle that time, among others. Helped out by Colley Mitchell. So that will move him back about three yards and bring up third down and eight for IMG. You get the feeling here, Smitty, that a couple of plays either way, just a couple of missed opportunities on long pass plays, this game could be 13-2 to two the other way. And it's flags come out before the snap. We got delay, I believe. It is a delay on IMG. And uh, marching back five more yards in, back into their own territory at their own 46-yard line. But uh, the ascenders just ascended. <laughs> they did. I've been waiting to use that, partner. I could see it in your eyes. You'd thought about that one all week. Third down and 13. They've got to get to the Trinity 41 for the first down. Carver on the backfield. Three wideouts. O'Connor looking to throw. He's got pressure up the middle. Throws, and it's nearly intercepted that time by Dominic Brown. It was a little low right off the shoestrings, and he couldn't haul it in, but it's going to bring up fourth down. And the ascenders are going to have to kick it. Just out of the reach right there. Yeah. The defense for Trinity is playing, except for a couple long running plays, playing a pretty good game. That's what, that's what as I mentioned, that this game could have tipped either way, really, in this first half. And Ooh, they had, that was out. blocked if it hadn't been blown dead. Should be a false start on IMG, but Trinity had that one blocked, and the, the officials blew it dead. And it must be a trend out there because uh, IMG's got a new punter in the game. Jackson Dick is the punter. He about and, had his first block. And they'll march it back five more yards and try it again. Ball spotted now at the IMG 41-yard line. Jackson picked the punter. Johnny Taylor waits for it at his own 28. Low snap. He bobbled it, and it was blocked. It was partially blocked and picked up right around midfield by Ulysses Gilbert. It would have been blocked if it hadn't been blown dead. So I knew Trinity had something to get there. So Trinity Catholic has blocked punts by two different IMG Academy punters here in the first half. Here, and here's what happened there, partner. The, 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 the up blocker for the punter, the guy that stands halfway in between the punter and the offensive line, 
was looking towards the interior of the line, never picked up the man coming off the edge, and the man coming off the edge got there. That's yep. the same way they blocked it last time. You read that one all the way. And the ball spotted right at the 50-yard line. Trinity Catholic. Here's Reed Carlton going to air it out. Far side, and he has got his man. Pick up of about five yards. It is Rudy Altar on the catch. Hill on the stop. So gain of uh, five on the play for the Celtics with 4.06 remaining. Second quarter. The Ascenders lead the Celtics 13-2. to two. So Reed Carlton, as a man in motion, operates from under center. Fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. This one overthrown and intercepted. Matthew Botang tipped it in the air and then hauled it in. And IMG will start again from its own 49-yard line. You just have to read Carlton to throw that ball a long way on the run. A lot of green to cover laterally. Do you want to help find the answers to tomorrow's medical questions today? Brinstar Medical Research is doing just that. If you want to be part of important medical studies with Brinstar, call 352-629-5800 for more information. And now back on the play-by-play of the Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week presented by the Kevin McDonald All-State Agency, here's Tom James. Thank you, Schmitty. IMG Academy's first season. This is their fourth game. They're 3-0. and And O'Connor... From under center, fakes the handoff, throws across the field. A little low on that throw. It is incomplete. It was intended for Jack Wager. Low and behind him. Tough catch to make. Yeah. Wager was trying to pick that one up just above the uh, turf right there. Unable to do so. So second down and 10. IMG at its own 49. With 3.53 left in the half. Thirteen to two, IMG Academy on Tom James alongside Tom Schmitz here at Celtic Field. Second and ten, out of the gun. O'Connor gives to Scarborough, who is pulling his way right up the middle across midfield, down inside the thirty-five. A first down and more, gain of about seventeen that time for both Scarborough. And the first eleven of it, he never got touched. Yep. Offensive line really doing a good job opening up gaping holes. A massive offensive line that is, too, for IMG Academy. First and 10 at the 34-yard line for the Ascenders. O'Connor back to throw. Goes right side. It's caught. And Thomas makes the catch. It's going to be a first down. It's Thomas's fourth reception here in the first half, and they'll mark it. 11-yard pass reception. Yep, at the 24, first down and 10. As we tick down towards three minutes to play in the first half. O'Connor continuing to pad his numbers on the season. As you mentioned, 530 yards coming into this game passing. Here's Scarborough again, busted loose into the zone. 24 yards for the touchdown. Bo Scarborough's third touchdown of the first half. You think Nick Saban's happy to see that kind of talent coming his way? Mm, mm, mm. Not even fair. As Bo Scarborough rips off a 24-yarder. As defenders bounce off of him. It wasn't like they even had to. He was just running upright. Eric Dicker, you know, reminds me of Eric Dickerson. He actually way was running up and good, and uh, yeah, got a real tall, upright running style, mm-hmm. and defenders just bouncing off of him. The guy who played for the Georgia Bulldogs, similar to that uh, back yeah. in the day. A guy named Walker. Might have heard of it. Two fifty-two left to play, second quarter. Twenty to two now. IMG Academy over Trinity Catholic. Insurance can be tricky. Not if you have insurance with the Kevin McDonald Agency. Call the McDonald Agency for all your insurance needs at 352-622-2333. 
That's 352-622-2333. And now back on the call of play-by-play for the Friday night Marion County High School Game of the Week presented by the Allstate McDonald Allstate Agency. Here's my partner, Tom James. Thank you, Schmitty. Rough first half for Trinity Catholic. The mistakes have really, really cost them. And that's the difference in the game. Yep. Trinity can play with IMG if they play mistake-free. But if you don't play mistake-free, you could get beat by a Pop Warner team. Well, uh, three turnovers, the fumble, and a couple of interceptions thrown by Carlton. And uh, IMG Academy has really cashed in on him. Here's the kick. It is taken at about the five-yard line. Of, uh, and he's got room to run, does Marquise Hendricks. All the way up to midfield. Check that. It's Teron Stanley on the return. The kickoff and return team for Trinity has over 130 yards of return yards. Well, you can't ask for much more if you're John Brantley. He's set the offense up royally three times up around midfield to start their possessions, and yet the offense has been unable to score thus far. It's first down and 10 for Trinity at their own 49-yard line. They can move it. Can they sustain a drive? And here is 19. It is Franklin with a huge run. Franklin gets the ball ripped away from him. It is a high recovers it at the 20. The fourth turnover of the first half for Trinity Catholic. An absolute nightmare as Franklin it ripped off a terrific run deep into IMG territory, and the ball was fumbled away. Some of the Trinity offensive linemen wanted to say he was down, but Franklin knew he had fumbled the ball right away, got up in disgust, hit himself in the head. Mm -hmm. So a pair of fumbles now and a pair of interceptions has just decimated. After a terrific run. Yeah. It just decimated the uh, scoring chances for the Celtics here. I know it stopped right away if I'm. Well, they're going to decide to give it to Mr. Scarborough instead. He takes it nearly 10 yards. He might have picked up a first down. On first down. Now they're going to say that ball was down. And Trinity picked up a loose ball right there, but, Smitty, you're right. Uh, they, they signaled down, and I believe he was down. And let's see where they mark this. It's going to be awfully close to a first down. Second and one. So you go up top here, partner, second and one, when you got when you know you got Scarborough. I think you can do it first down with under two minutes left. Second down and one. But uh, that's why we're up here. They give it to the running back. Woo, there's some leather trading going on out there. Oh, and now we got a Now we're going to have a personal foul on number 11 for IMG. As after the play, he shoved the Trinity player right in the face, right in front of the back judge. Casey Gunderson, the wide receiver. As Smitty mentioned, uh, the gentleman in question for IMG Academy. As Jack Wager on the carry that time, but they're going to step this one backwards. As you mentioned so eloquently earlier on, they're going to give him the first down. The ascenders are descending once again. They give him the first down and then back him up 15 on the first on the ball. ball. Dead ball. On the dead ball. So. So you lose 15 yards and you get a first down. So it is first down and 10 from the 20 yard line with 148 to play in the second quarter. Here's O'Connor back to throw across the middle. It is caught by Thomas. Clark Thomas, five receptions here in the first half, and this one a big one up near midfield. It brought down that time by... Good to see who made the tackle there. Hurry up offense in effect. It's number 24. We don't have a 24 on the Trinity roster, but here's another carry this time by Jack Wager, and he's still going. Down the far sideline towards the 25. There is a flag on the field back in the line of scrimmage. This whole thing might be coming back. Jack Wager picking up where uh, Bo Scarborough left off with some holding of his own. On the offense. Forget about that one. 
That's coming all the way back, partner. And then some. Not a star in the sky. A little overcast here at the stadium. So they're going to back this one up. Uh, the line of scrimmage was the 49-yard line, their own 49, and they're going to spot it at the 37. The math just doesn't seem to be figuring up, Parker. That's about 12 yards. Is that from the spot of the foul? At least it is in the uh, official's scorebook. Do you want to help find the answers to tomorrow's medical questions today? Renstar Medical Research is doing just that. If you want to be part of important medical studies with Renstar, call 352-629-5800 for more information. Insurance can be tricky. Not if you have insurance with the Kevin McDonald Agency. Call the McDonald Agency for all your insurance needs at 352-622-2333. That's 352-622-2333. And now back on the call, live from Celtic Field on the campus of Trinity Catholic, here's Tom James. Thank you, Smitty. Uh, props going out to uh, linebacker Ulysses Gilbert uh, for... Trinity Catholic, who's made some tackles already in this game defensively for the Celtics. He came into the game with 34 tackles already. A couple of really good linebackers, uh, Gilbert and Marquise Hendricks, uh, in this game tonight, doing the bulk of the work uh, defensively for Trinity Catholic. So, first down and 10, out of the gun. O'Connor looking for room to run, and he takes it himself near the first down marker, but flat That's down the back yard, and it was holding again on the center. That's coming back. Hmm? Umpire threw it right at the foot of the center. As the center, center, the center had the back of the jersey. The center for the ascenders. Yeah. You can tell an old middle linebacker knows holding when he sees it. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Ne- never guilty where he just knew what it looked like. I'll be honest with you. In my 18-plus years of playing football, I was a middle linebacker the entire time. I was held every play. <laughs> of course you were. I mean, if we had Scott Brantley over here, NFL middle linebacker, he'd tell you, held every play. So it's still first down for IMG Academy. It's just uh, a little longer than 10 yards. In fact, it's about 26. So O'Connor again will operate out of the shotgun. Under a minute to play, and O'Connor's going to have to pick it up off the turf. And he is sacked way back at about the 11-yard line. It was a low snap. He was never able to get a handle on that football. John Brantley looks like he's just satisfied with going into the half, not trying to stop the clock. And there's that man again, Hendricks, on the sack. That may be the last play of the half. Just setting the ball ready for play with 22 seconds left. That may be the last play of this half. Even longer than it was before. I like what the announcer just said. Second down and even longer than it was the play before. <laughs> well, they're at the uh, that is gonna be 13 the end of the yard line, and that's 30. And it's going to wrap it up the end of our first half. With your half that would have been four. third and 44. You didn't get to see that one, though, Bargo. So 20 to 2 is your halftime score as IMG Academy has come to Celtic Field and uh, taken, the, taken advantage of four Trinity Catholic turnovers to take a 20 to 2 halftime lead here at Celtic Field. And my, my perception of how this has went the first half, partner, is. Trinity hasn't been outplayed so much as they can't get out of their own way. Four plays have made all the difference. All turnovers. Four plays and a guy named Scarborough. How about that? With three touchdowns. It it just seems like, though, with Trinity Catholic, if they don't turn the ball over this game, it's still 6-2. to two. Mm-hmm. Well, Trinity took the early lead 2 to nothing on that blocked punt in the end zone. IMG Academy has scored 20 unanswered points since that time. All off turnovers. Yep. Four Trinity turnovers. Two fumbles 
and two Carlton interceptions. Nothing. That's not taking anything away from IMG Academy. Scarborough is very impressive at the running back position. And O'Connor has a very strong arm at the quarterback position. But in my estimation, they have O'Connor and Scarborough and about 60 other kids in uniform. It's a big offensive line, though. They do have a good offensive line. Opening holes for Scarborough. Big boy. He ran untouched twice. Yes, he did. Well, fraternity Catholic coaches have to get the team together, get them pulled back in the locker room, and get them focused on how to win the second half. You've lost the first half, but the game is still a long way from being over. You're, you're three scores away. But there's lots of time left. Trinity can still get right back in this football game. We know they have the offense to do it. They showed that last week by throwing 44 up against Eastside. Well, Eastside and IMG Academy, two different worlds. Two different uh, worlds. But if they could just hold on to the football and not turn it over, like you said, uh, this could be a, a completely different football game. And uh, when this place gets humming and Trinity gets the momentum here at Celtic Field, uh, we've seen it before. They can come from behind and turn this game all the way around into their favor. So they've got another half to do it. Well, let's take a break. We'll uh, come back. We'll give you some scores from around the county, plus we'll give you all the statistics from the first half. We'll do that next on the Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week brought to you by the Kevin McDonald Allstate Agency right here on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Day presents... Things you shouldn't have to do to find your local insurance agent. One, turn on your GPS. Two, fill up your gas tank. Three, cross state lines. That's because Allstate believes your local insurance agent should actually be local, as in located nearby. That 15-minute insurance company now claims to have local agents, but the truth is they have less than 200 spread across the entire country. Allstate has more than 12,000, so a local agent is always easy to find. They know you personally and care about you because they're members of your community, too. Wherever you live, nobody protects you like an Allstate agent. Hey, this is Kevin McDonald, and we've been local since 1985 with four locations to serve you in Ocala and the Villages. Call us today at 622-2333 or visit us online at themcdonaldagency.com and let us provide you with a comparison on all your insurance needs. Having the motivation and making the commitment to quit smoking is a great first step towards becoming smoke-free. However, anyone who's tried to quit smoking knows how challenging it can be. Having the determination to quit may not be enough. You may need some help. If you're ready to quit smoking and are between the ages of 18 and 75, currently smoke 10 or more cigarettes a day, and can commit to participating for 24 weeks, you may be interested in a research study which is being conducted to evaluate the use of investigational drugs to see if they can aid in individuals in their quest to quit smoking. To help you quit, smoking cessation counseling and all study-related medical care will be provided at no extra cost. You may also be reimbursed for your travel time. To receive more information about this study, how you can participate, please call Renstar Medical Research in Ocala at 352-629-5800. That's Renstar Medical Research in Ocala, 352-629-5800. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. I want to tell you about a conversation I had recently with General Manager Pat Murray on the great family atmosphere at Country Club of Ocala. It's a family first club. Um, again, we you know we 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 have any number of different types of memberships, but obviously the the, the one that attracts the greatest level of interest is our family. And the reason for that is we have a little bit of something for everybody. I mean, we have we obviously have a world class golf course. Um, we have uh, seven tennis courts here for all levels of uh, tennis players. We have a junior Olympic size swimming pool. We have the uh, we have a fitness center that's that's second to none, and we have state of the art equipment in our fitness center. Country Club of Ocala, where the facilities are all a family would ever need. For more information, call today at 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of Monday's Gator Report and Gator Talk Thursday right here on The Source. 
Hi, this is Lisa Midget, owner of Kinetic Motion Fitness here in Ocala, Florida. A lot of you have experienced our great classes and personal small group training, but did you know we now offer dynamic workouts on DVD? These high quality, locally produced, effective DVD workouts can go where you go. Going on vacation? No problem. We can go with you. Friends and relatives out of town who are jealous that you get to come to KMF? No problem. We ship anywhere in the United States for free. Our great lineup of four DVDs includes Kinetic Achieve, Kinetic Couples, Kinetic Core, and Kinetic Campus. Four great workouts for the entire family on DVD. Sound interesting? Check them out on our website at kmfocala.com. While you're there, check out our class schedule and come see us. We're only five minutes from downtown across from the Skylark Plaza. Visit kmfocala.com and like us on Facebook. KMF will get you results at our studio or at home with one of our DVDs. Kinetic Motion Fitness. We're ready when you are. Visit kmfocala.com for more information. Dr. Seaborn Hunt, board certified ophthalmologist, the only ophthalmologist in Marion County offering bladeless laser cataract surgery with astigmatism correction. What does this mean to you? It means that your cataract surgery would be done with the newest and most advanced cataract surgical techniques on the market today. It means no more metal blades and more precise incisions. Laser cataract surgery combined with the new technology multifocal lens implants allows you the opportunity to be independent of glasses for most things that you do on a daily basis. Call Dr. Seaborn Hunt at 873-7200. That's 873-7200. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. We're back live from Celtic Field on the campus of Trinity Catholic High School. It is halftime of Trinity Catholic Celtics and the IMG Academy Ascenders. Score 20 for the Ascenders, 2 for the Celtics. Here with the halftime stats, my play-by-play partner, Tom James. Thank you, Schmitty. And, uh, you know, it, we talked about how this game could have tipped on a couple of plays either way. As it says, it is 20-2 to two in favor of IMG Academy here at Celtic Field over Trinity Catholic. And, of course, uh, as far as your first-half stats, passing, Reed Carlton, the quarterback for Trinity Catholic, he was 8 for 15 through the air for 80 yards, uh, did throw two interceptions and a couple of fumbles for the offense, uh, one of them uh, by Carlton. Uh, as far as the rushing yardage for Trinity Catholic, Mark Franklin, number 19, five carries for 35 yards to lead the way. Defensively, a couple of sacks registered by the Celtic defense. Uh, two blocked punts on two different punters, as well as a blocked extra point. So three blocks in all for uh, Trinity Catholic defensively in that special teams. As for IMG passing, their uh, heralded quarterback Michael O'Connor, who is headed to Penn State, 6 for 14 through the air for 77 yards. Bo Scarborough, the running back, headed to Alabama, already over 100 yards in the first half. Ten carries for 112 yards. He came into this game averaging 9.9 yards per carry. At 11 that has, yeah, that's going up now. He's at 11.2 a carry in this game. That's right, with three touchdowns. So Bo Scarborough is uh, living up to the hype uh, so far tonight. So the defense, uh, uh, defense for IMG, of course, uh, crossing the two interceptions from Carlton, two purple recoveries as well. Let's give you some other scores uh, while we're at it from around Marion County involving Marion County teams tonight. The Forest Wildcats playing at Citrus, and they are trailing in the second quarter, 21-7 to to the Hurricanes. Another Hurricanes, uh, Lake Weir, trailing 3 to nothing in the second quarter to Gainesville High. Also a second quarter score, North Marion on top of Swanee, 14-7, to and Gainesville inside the second quarter leading Bellevue 7-0. We're still waiting for uh, reports from the OCA Leesburg First Academy game. Uh, Donnell and Alachua Santa Fe still waiting on that one. And uh, Vanguard is playing at Lake Mineola. Should have a score on that one here uh, fairly soon. Westport and Jacksonville Mandarin as well. Hope to get those scores for you here in uh, the very, very near future. So that's where we stand. 20-2 to is your score here at Celtic Field as... IMG Academy from the Bradenton area has come up to Celtic Field and caused the 
four turnovers and leads Trinity Catholic 20 to two at the half on the strength of three touchdowns and 112 yards rushing in the first half from Bo Scarborough. Well, Scarborough, all that is advertised, yeah, is definitely going to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Looks like he's ready to and primed to be part of the Crimson Tide next year. Also, the four the four turnovers are the difference in this football game. As we've seen, if you turn the ball over, I don't care how good a football program you are, if you turn the ball over multiple times in a game, good football teams will make you pay, and that's exactly what's happened to Trinity here. They've turned the ball over four times, three, t- three running touchdowns out of the four turnovers, 20 unanswered points by IMG to lead 20 to two and a half. Well, I want to make it clear, and I think I'm sure you'd agree with me, that uh, athletically it, it's not a big difference between these two teams. They've both got lots of uh, terrific – uh, stars on both sides of the football, and uh, Trinity certainly has uh, every bit of the talent that IMG Academy has. It's just those four plays, those turnovers, that have made this such a one-sided game in the first half. Yeah, because Reed O'Connor, while he's a good quarterback, D1 prospect going to Penn State, he has not outplayed Reed Carlson. Reed Carlson, the starting quarterback, three-year starting quarterback at Trinity, just as capable at quarterback as the much-heralded IMG quarterback. It, it seems as though he can make just about all the throws that O'Connor can make. It's just those two interceptions and the one fumble on the uh, bad decision on that pitch back. But, uh, you know, he laid one out for uh, Rudy Altar out here who was had beaten the defender by five yards. Altar. Yep, he just dropped it. Tell you what, partner, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get you set up for the second half of Trinity Catholic Celtics versus the IMG Academy of Senders. Right here at Celtic Field and on the campus of Trinity Catholic, the Trinity Catholic Band on the field now. God and Country, the theme of their halftime show. We'll be back after this timeout on the McDonald Agency Friday Night High School Game of the Week. You're listening to it on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com, The Source. Here in Florida, when you're looking to go to the beach, you've got hundreds of options. Theme parks, no shortage of options there either. But when it comes to home insurance, most companies have only one option. Allstate is different. Here in Florida, Allstate agents offer home insurance options from several companies, so they can help you get the coverage that's right for you. And they'll help you save on quality car insurance, too. For starters, safe drivers save 45% with Allstate. So before you settle for just one option, talk to someone with many home and car insurance options. Your local Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? For more information, call the McDonald Agency at 352-622-2333 or visit us online at themcdonaldagency.com. Allstate has no financial responsibility to you for any home insurance policy you purchase and would not be responsible for any claims. Allstate does not make any representations or accept liability related to operations of home insurance companies, including but not limited to their financial conditions. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. Dry, itchy, scaly skin? Do you have psoriasis? Consider joining our research study. Rentstar Medical Research in Ocala is conducting a research study evaluating the effectiveness of investigational combination of two study medications for moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. You may qualify if you're between the ages of 18 and 75 and have been diagnosed with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis for at least six months. For more information, please call Renstar in Ocala at 352-629-5800. Qualified participants may receive study-related medical care and study medication. Compensation for time and travel may also be provided. To find out more information about this psoriasis study, please call Renstar Medical Research at 352-629-5800. That's 352-629-5800. Renstar Medical Research, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Recently, I had a great conversation with General Manager Pat Murray on the special events at Country Club of Ocala. We have a lot of uh, events, special events here that are that are geared towards the family. Um, the Easter comes to mind. We have the, an Easter bunny who hops around on the driving range. At, we usually hide somewhere in a bit of 3,000 eggs and, 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 and turn them loose and let them go harvest the eggs. We have a great family celebration here on the 4th of July where it's, it's a traditional cookout, if you will. And as the, as the sun goes down, the driving range becomes alive with uh, probably one of the better fireworks displays in the, in the area. Uh, breakfast with Santa is a Big, is a big deal. Country Club of Ocala, where the Easter Bunny, Santa, and all the children, large and small, are a big deal on every special occasion. For more information, call 
352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of the Monday Gator Report, right here on The Source. Dr. Seaborn Hunt, a board-certified ophthalmologist in Ocala, offers advanced cataract surgery with laser astigmatism correction to reduce and potentially eliminate your dependence on glasses for both distance and near vision and some areas in between. If you have cataracts or need a second opinion to discuss your lens implant options and determine if you're a candidate for precision multifocal lens implant, call Dr. Hunt's office to set up an appointment to see if you qualify for the upgraded lens. Call Dr. Seaborn Hunt's office today for an appointment, 873-7200. That's 873-7200. Requires bank approval. Vehicle purchase price effects trade allowance. Yahoo! Kids are back in school and report cards are right around the corner. I've got old cars shaking in their boots because I'm flunking clunkers and junkers this month. Hey, Professor Chris Spears from Prestige Auto Sales. What's a smart plan to keep you from flunking out in a car that can't make the grade? This week, trade in and save more. Get the appraised value of your old car plus up to $4,500 off a nicer, newer car. Stuck in bad credit detention? Our For the People credit approval process wants to help everyone even if you've been turned down before. I vow that no car will be left behind. Visit Prestige Auto Sales today. Yes, during our old car report card event, you'll get up to $4,500 off a nicer, newer car, plus the appraised value of your old car. But hurry, my old car report card event ends September 30th or after we've helped 67 students pass the test in a nicer, newer car. My name is Chris Spears, and I'm a dealer for the people. Visit Prestige Auto Sales in Ocala or Bellevue or call 694-1234. See you at Prestige. Allstate presents things you shouldn't have to do to find your local insurance agent. One, turn on your GPS. Two, fill up your gas tank. Three, cross state lines. That's because Allstate believes your local insurance agent should actually be local, as in located nearby. That 15-minute insurance company now claims to have local agents, but the truth is they have less than 200 spread across the entire country. Allstate has more than 12,000, so a local agent is always easy to find. They know you personally and care about you because they're members of your community, too. Wherever you live, nobody protects you like an Allstate agent. Hey, this is Kevin McDonald, and we've been local since 1985 with four locations to serve you in Ocala and the Villages. Call us today at 622-2333 or visit us online at themcdonaldagency.com and let us provide you with a comparison on all your insurance needs. We're back live at Celtic Field on the campus of Trinity Catholic Church, on Trinity Catholic School, excuse me, at the Trinity Catholic IMG football game, the McDonald All-State Agency Friday night Marion County High School game of the week. uh, Halftime score, IMG 20, Trinity 2, here with what needs to happen in the second half for Trinity to get back in this game, Tom James. No more turnovers if you're Trinity Catholic. Uh, There were four too many for the Celtics in the first half, and it uh, it cost them everything. I mean, this uh, this game, as we talked about, uh, it really could turn either way on four or five plays, four of those being... Uh, the four turnovers from Trinity, the two interceptions thrown by Carlton, the two fumbles recovered by IMG Academy, and they cashed in on all of it. And uh, three touchdown runs from Bo Scarborough for uh, IMG Academy, and that's made it the 20-2 to two ball game that it is here, headed into the third quarter right now in favor of IMG. And uh, you don't see Trinity Catholic uh, down by 18 very often on its own field, do you? Very, very much uh, still lots of football to play here. So this game isn't over. But Trinity needs to cut out those mistakes, like you said, bear down, stop the IMG running attack. Because that's how they've been burnt. The IMG passing attack has not been what's hurt the Trinity Catholic Celtics. It's the running attack. Two times Scarborough took on touchdowns where he didn't even get his jersey dirty. Yeah. Well, he's got guys bouncing uh, off of him right and left. That is for certain. We see the harvest moon starting to rise uh, to the east uh, across the field from us on the IMG Academy uh, side of the field. And we're trying to get you some scores here from other Marion County schools. As we mentioned, uh, late second half, Gainesville Eastside on top of Bellevue, 7 nothing. 
In fact, uh, we've got an update on that. Uh, that game is now tied at 14 apiece. Bellevue and East Side. Late second quarter, Citrus now 21 to 7 lead over the Forest Wildcats. You got to love the halftime Frank DeLuca giving away scholarships. <laughs> North Marion and the Swanee Bulldogs are tied at 14, late second quarterback, or late second quarter, excuse me. Gainesville leading Lake Weir 3 to nothing. And east side in Bellevue, as we mentioned, 14 all. Still waiting on the Vanguard score, still waiting on the Westport score, and still waiting on the Donnellan and OCA scores. So we'll, uh, when those come in, we'll keep you updated on those scores here tonight. So we are getting set for the kickoff here to start the second half. As Trinity Catholic, uh, still a breeze, too, partner. Still a breeze as we uh, think as the harvest moon comes up over the trees. Beautiful, beautiful full moon. Just a little hint of fall in the air, I would say, tonight. It's Trinity, of course, in its uh, full green uniforms, tops and bottoms with the gold and white trim. IMG Academy up from Bradenton, white jerseys, dark blue bottoms, and Trinity will kick it off to start the second half. And here is the kick. And it is fielded by the up man. It's number 11 this time, Casey Gunderson. He's one of the wide receivers, and he is taken down just across the 20-yard line. At the 25, they're going to mark it at 25. And so that is where IMG will start the third quarter. Just across the 25, maybe to the 26 is where they mark it. So IMG with the 20 to 2 lead. See if they can build on that right out of the gates. And uh, conversely, let's see if Trinity Catholic can step up defensively, shut them down, and get the football back and start something offensively. They have not scored on offense so far in this game. Just their two points coming on that blocked punt early on. In the end zone for the safety. And O'Connor hands to Bo Scarborough on first down. He's across the 30-yard line to about the 33. And that's a gain of about eight on first down for IMG Academy. Austin Chapman, our uh, esteemed intern, just throwing T-shirts into the crowd. We give it away here at WLC. Yeah, we really do. Is the ball loose on the ground? The ball is high out there, and there's a pile... We never saw O'Connor come out of there with it. He recovered the fumble on the snap. A loss of one, though, and that'll bring up third down and a long four for IMG Academy. So this is a big play right here for the Celtic defense. Third down and five. Third down and five. Yeah, so O'Connor again. Robert O'Connor operating under the We're have to start. And, and a false start coming against IMG. That'll back him up. Oh, no, they called that offside on Trinity. It looked to me like it was a false start, but they called that encroachment against Trinity. Well, that ought to be enough for the first down. That's going to be awful close. And that is a first down. So move the chains in favor of IMG Academy. There again, Schmitty, a mistake from Trinity Catholic that uh, went from being third and long to a first down for IMG. Move the chains. Well, well partner, it took me to the second half, but I'm not real sure the referees got that one right. Wow. There was something missing in the first half. And now I just realized it. O'Connor scrambling. He finds Gunderson on the near side across midfield, across the 45, and a first down for IMG Academy. That is a well-coached play. O'Connor takes the ball down, starts to run, picks up where his line of scrimmage is, finds an open receiver before he crosses the line of scrimmage, and makes a great pass for positive yardage in a first down. So the ball on the Trinity Catholic 44-yard line, just inside the 44, first down and 10. (laughs) 
Parker, that is a massive offensive line IMG brings up to the ball. Certainly is. No wonder most Carperos can file in the uh, 10 yards per carry that he is so far this season. Not to take anything away from him. And here is Scarborough. And just pulling his way through. And he may be gone. Bo Scarborough is off 44 yards down the near sideline for the touchdown. Ran through two arm tackles, hit daylight, turned on the burners, and there's six more. Destination pay dirt for Bo Scarborough, his fourth trip to the end zone. And he's got now over 150 yards rushing and four touchdowns in this game thus far. There's no way you're going to reach out with the human arm and stop a guy in a full stride like that. You've got to get a shoulder into him. You've got to wrap him up and bring him down. So here's the extra, extra point by Jackson Dick, and it's a fake. It was uh, dropped. In fact, the snap was low and dropped, and Trinity is able to stuff that effort. Jack Weger, uh, the holder on that, was never able to get the, uh, control of that football to put it down for the kicker and kind of had to pick it up and run with it and wasn't able to get anywhere with it. So it's 26-2 to two in favor of IMG Academy with 9.44 left to play in the third quarter. Do you want to help find the answer to tomorrow's medical questions today? Renstar Medical Research is doing just that. If you want to be part of important medical studies with Renstar, call 352-629-5800 for more information. Insurance can be tricky. Not if you have insurance with the Kevin McDonald Allstate Agency. Call the McDonald Agency for all your insurance needs at 352-622-2333. That's 352-622-2333. And here with the play-by-play, live from Celtic Field at the, on the campus of Trinity Catholic, Tom James. As IMG Academy gets set to kick it off, leading at 26-2. to two. A couple of former college quarterbacks here uh, facing off each other, against each other, and the head coaches here tonight. And here is the kickoff. Taken by the up man at the 15-yard line. That's London Gaskin, it looks like. Uh, check that uh, Rudy Altar. Gaskin is out tonight. Rudy Altar takes it across the 20. Did a lot of running for just a few yards there. A little They're stirring it up a little bit down there, these two teams, uh, after that tackle. A little no parking going on. A little parking going on. on. Uh, Trinity will start first to 10 at its own 25 yard line. We talked about John Brantley, who was a played quarterback for the Florida Gators in the late 70s. And Chris Winky, the head coach of IMG Academy, who played quarterback for the Florida State Seminoles in the late 90s and into 2000, won the Heisman. Yeah, let him do a national title. Yeah, New York Athletic Club gave him some little trophy. Yeah. And Carlton throws across the middle. The receiver was well covered and uh, hit him in the hands, though. Remember I told you there may be a little alligator arms later? That was an alligator arm effort by the receiver on a pretty good thrown pass by Reed Carlton in the coverage. But that was a little alligator arms by the receiver there. Rudy Altar in and out of the hands of Rudy right there. So second down and 10 at the 25. We've said that tonight, in and out of the hands of Rudy Altar. A couple of times. And not only him. Nine and a half minutes left to play, third quarter. Here's Carlton. And he throws. It's complete. Up to the 40-yard line in the first down. There's a flag on the play, though. Let's see what the call is. Holding on the offense. That's going to bring it back. Nick uh, Nick Berserko on the catch, but uh, that's all for naught. And just when you think Trinity has uh, a little bright spot, it's wiped out. You can't ask for more out of your quarterback than Reed Carlton. He did make the one mistake, but he's throwing the ball great today. And he's getting backed up by mistakes by his offensive line. Well, uh, you know, he, he's thrown a lot of good balls tonight, a couple of bad ones that were picked off in the first half. As we tick towards nine minutes to play. Here in the third quarter, Trinity Catholic in the mighty hole right now, down 26-2. to two. Here they come on the blitz. Down, and the handoff is it's Franklin that time, positive yards across the 20. 
Almost got it back to the original line of scrimmage at the 25. It's going to be third and 13, it looks like. Right, yeah, just short of the 23-yard line. And Trinity has got to get it to just across the 35 to move those chains. So third and long, third and a good 12. As the clock keeps on ticking, eight and a half now to play third quarter. Four wide receivers for Carlton here on third and long. Out of the shotgun. Back to throw. Lobs one near side. Down the sidelines. It's Rudy Altar, and he was well covered that time as that pass overthrown just as well. So that will bring up fourth down and 12, and the Celtics will have to kick it away. And Reed Carlton going back into the punt position. So it will be Reed Carlton. Kicking into the wind. Had a punt partially blocked in the first half. You can't see the wind. The flag is not moving at all. But there is a sizable breeze. There's a sizable breeze up here uh, near the press box where we are, but down where the uh, large American flag is right now, it's fairly still. So we'll see uh, how intense the pressure is on this punt effort. Carlton gets it away, but it's uh, an end over end, uh, kind of a wobbly kick, actually. It goes out of bounds as he felt the pressure right there. And it goes out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. They'll mark it down at the 44 of Trinity. So IMG Academy going from right to left on your radio here in the third quarter. Right to left. That's where they'll start first down and 10 at the Trinity 44. What's the chances we see number a heavy dose of number six in the second half? I don't see why not if you're IMG Academy. He's got over 150 yards and four touchdowns. Keep feeding the beast. That big fellow right now is waiting on that football. He scored four touchdowns, but instead of Connor going to throw over the middle and just overthrown. He intended that time for Clark Thomas, and he had a step on his defenders. Would have been a touchdown had he that one been on target. So second down and ten now for IMG. Trinity Faithful still here in mass in the stands. IMG, for as far as they come, got a good 50, 60 people over in their stands. Good showing for coming all the way from Bradenton. And we'll update you uh, an amazing score right now in the Forest Citrus game. We'll give you that update here in a minute. And here's the handoff this time to Scarborough, pulling his way ahead. A short gain, maybe two yards off left tackle. Gilbert with the tackle. He's had a number of those tonight to go with the 34 he came into the game with. Well, you think things are going bad right now for Trinity Catholic. Try being a Forest Wildcat fan over at Citrus County. Pretty good score over there. Halftime, Citrus 35, Forest 7. Got a, got a feel for Coach Skip Austin in a rebuilding pro- project at Forest High School. I know that don't help you out any, partner. <clears throat> Moving on. <laughs> out of the shot. O'Connor out of the shotgun looking for somebody and he's got his man who drops it Jack Wager and O'Connor takes a pop and he threw a nice and ball there. yeah he did take a pop and he had a nice ball there to a wide open Wager on the near sidelines who had his mitts on it and dropped it whenever you stand in there like a quarterback like that take a shot so you can deliver the ball on time you really don't want to give. You don't give your receiver a good look when he gets back in the huddle after missing a ball like that. I just sold my body out to throw a perfect strike to you, and you drop it. Don't make eye contact with me, sir. No. Seven sixteen to play, third quarter. Robert O'Connor under center, fourth and eight. There's Wigger in motion across the middle. It's complete, and he is gone. I'll see you in my rear view, boys. Touchdown, a 44-yard connection between O'Connor and his wide receiver, Casey Gunderson, for the touchdown on fourth and eight. No fear in the camp of IFG Academy. This one's getting ugly, partner. So it's an extra point away from being 33-2. to two. And IMG has been credited with scoring all the points for both teams. The extra point is up, and it is good. 
33 to 2. It's 7 8 to play in the third quarter in favor of IMG Academy, who once trailed this game to Trinity 2 to nothing. Do you want to help find the answers to DeMar's medical questions today? Rinstar Medical Research is doing just that. If you want to be part of important medical studies with Rinstar, call 352 629 5800 for more information. Insurance can be tricky. Not if you have insurance with the Kevin McDonald Allstate Agency. Call the McDonald Allstate Agency for all your insurance needs at 352 622 2333. That's 352 622 2333. And now back on the play by play call, here's Tom James. All right, Shitty. 33 to 2 is the score. Been a long time since Trinity's taken a beating like this one, especially here at Celtic Field. The fans are hanging around. They just need something to go their way offensively. They've had a close calls on a lot of big plays in this game. And for one reason or another, they've not been able to connect on them. And this kick is into the end zone. That will be a touchback. Let's take this timeout. Let's take a 30-second timeout. You're listening to the Kevin McDonald All-State Agency's Friday Night Game of the Week right here on WOCA, The Source. Here in Florida, when you're looking to go to the beach, you've got hundreds of options. Theme parks, no shortage of options there either. But when it comes to home insurance, most companies have only one option. Allstate is different. Here in Florida, Allstate agents offer home insurance options from several companies. So they can help you get the coverage that's right for you. And they'll help you save on quality car insurance too. For starters, safe drivers save 45% with Allstate. So before you settle for just one option, talk to someone with many home and car insurance options. Your local Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? For more information, call the McDonald Agency at 352-622-2333 or visit us online at themcdonaldagency.com. Allstate has no financial responsibility to you for any home insurance policy you purchase and would not be responsible for any claims. Allstate does not make any representations or accept liability related to operations of home insurance companies, including but not limited to their financial conditions. Subject. All right, welcome back to Celtic Field. Uh, short running play, gain of about a yard on first down. Now it's second down for Trinity Catholic. And Carl out of the shotgun, going to keep it himself, scampering up the middle and sliding across the 35 to the 37. Terrific play and good presence of mind right there by Carlton to see the opening and take it as far as he could and wisely sliding in for the first down. And uh, that opens up the field a little bit for the Trinity Catholic at its own 37-yard line. So perhaps this is the time that the offense finally is able to sustain a drive down the field. Carlton out of the gun once again. Throws near side. It is dropped again wide open. Really no excuse for that. Nick Mazurko felt the footsteps, but uh, the defender still several yards off him, and that was hit him right in the numbers, Smitty. That would have been a good pickup of five, six yards on first down. That would have been a, you know, manageable second down and instead of second and ten. Second and ten from the 37. 6-0-4 to play third quarter. And the handoff this time to Franklin is across the 40-yard 40 uh, 40 line, a nine-yard gain. Picks up, uh, well, seven or eight anyway. Well, they, gave, they moved that back a yard. I thought he got the 45, and they said he got the 44 and uh, about a half. Might have shortchanged him a little bit right there. But uh, now third down and a long two at the 44-yard line. They've got to get just across the 46 for the first down. Carlton going to keep it himself. Calling his own number. First down and much more. Terrific job right there by Reed Carlton. That was a quarterback keeper all the way across midfield, down inside the 45 to the 43. Took, got as many yards as he possibly could before wisely sliding again. So it's the Carlton keepers that have been picking up the yardage on this drive for Trinity Catholic. You know, and that he picked up the blitz read very well there. And just didn't even look to see what his outlets were. He just tucked the ball and took off running right up through the center of the heart of the field. Let's update some uh, out around the county scores, Tom. Uh, halftime, Bellevue, a one-point lead over Gainesville East Side right now, 21 to 20. As we mentioned at the half, Citrus 35 to 7 over Forest. 
20 in North Marion, tied at the half, 14 all. Good football game there. And yeah, it's in Gainesville uh, at Lake Weir, up 3 0 last check in the second quarter. As we come out of the timeout with 5.27 to go, third quarter here in the third quarter, Westport going from left to right. Left to right on your radio. The trail is at 33 to 2. Here's first down. And a little end around, and they fake it. Colton now going to unleash it deep. And he's got his man. Touchdown. And finally, Rudy Altar with the touchdown. Now that play took an hour and a half to develop, but it was a touchdown. <laughs> At long last, Trinity Catholic has got something out of the offense that they can put on the scoreboard. They fake the reverse. Fake the double reverse. They fake the double reverse. It's right. And Carlton aired it out and found Rudy Altar down there near the goal line for the touchdown. And the extra point is up and good. So, Reed Carlton showed you that arm he has. He's capable of throwing the ball all over the yard. Just hadn't had his receivers helping him too much tonight. Yep. So, about a 54-yard touchdown connection. 55 yards. Carlton at the Altar. And it's 33 to nine. Still a lot of time on the clock, Schmitty. Need They need to get a stop here. After that explosive touchdown play, a quick defensive stop would sort of bolster that momentum that uh, they've started. You're right. They scored another touchdown. Let's get them within two scores. Well, just almost. Down and an... <laughs> Yeah, 33 to 9. A touchdown and a two-point conversion. We get them within two scores. Get them within two scores. Conceivably, yes, that's right. I thought I'd done the math, right? Yeah, yeah, I know you're from South Georgia, but I haven't heard that yet tonight either. Well, I got all my fingers and toes exposed, so I can I can count. All right. But yeah, it's been a little different, Schmitty, tonight. Haven't haven't heard the South Georgia lines yet. Really been awful nice to the officials. What's going on over here? Officials doing a pretty good job out here tonight. They send the crew that doesn't aggravate John Brantley too much. To I'm going to reach across and ask your our, our guy Austin Statman Tatman. Are you going to get the real Tom Schmitz for me and bring him up here? I don't recognize this guy tonight. Here's the kickoff. It's short, taken by the up man by IMG Academy, and he is just short of the 30 yard line. So that's where the ascenders will start this drive. Now, this is where the defense of Trinity has to help out the offense. After the big play, the offense gets some points on the board. The defense now needs to come up big. A three and out would be huge here for the Trinity Catholic Celtics. So, in fact, IMG will start first to ten from its own 34 with 5-14 to play third quarter. Empty backfield. Four wide receivers. As O'Connor. Turns and throws. Right side, a little bubble screen once again. Guess who? Bo Scarborough lining up way out there. He's listed on the roster, not as a running back, but as a, quote, athlete. Yeah, I saw that. The the ever popular these days, ATH. That's correct. So, first down. And the nose of the football, right on their own 45. And now here Scarborough comes flanked out wide to the near side. Five wide receivers. Scarborough being one of the five. Out of the shotgun. He's looking again for Scarborough. And throws it a little low and behind him that time, right at the 50-yard line. And as good as Scarborough is, not able to reach down far enough and be able to pick that one up. He is quite an athlete, though, Scarborough. You can really tell that he has got all the makings of a great college back. And, of course, the quarterback, Robert O'Connor, headed to Penn State. Scarborough to Alabama, as we talked about in the first half. A couple of big-time D1 programs scooping up a couple of these guys from IMG Academy. 
Again out of the shotgun. Trinity on the blitz. And definitely on the blitz and nearly picked it off on the deflection. Almost intercepted. Number 22, Willie Young, dove for that one. The intended wide receiver was Gunderson. Brown knocked it away to create that tip ball. Yep, Brown was uh, doing a great job right there of defending Gunderson. It deflected off of one or the both of them and nearly picked off by Young. And it is now third down. And it's going to stop here. Yeah. They need a lot of points, though, to empty back to out of five them. wide. Yep, on third down and ten with four and a half minutes left to play, third quarter. Here's O'Connor feeling pressure, delivering the football way overthrown, far side. And O'Connor fit the dust that time. John Brantley's defense really sold out there, brought everybody on the blitz and said, if you're going to beat us deep, you're going to have to get it off quick. And one of the one of the terrific linebackers, Marquise Hendricks, was the one that laid O'Connor out on the turf that time. O'Connor shows the ability to stand in there and take a pop, though, to deliver a football. That's what you got to be to be a good drop-back quarterback. You've got to be able to stand in there under pressure and deliver the football. Well, he's a big kid, 6'4", 222, hails from Ontario, Canada. Does Robert O'Connor. Here's the punt. And end over end, they get it away. It is fielded at about the 20-yard line, that time again by Willie Young. Willie Young fielded at 16 and tackled immediately by number, by number 10, Dixon, for IMG Academy. Yeah, so Trinity Catholic will start at their own 17-yard line. First and 10 at 421 mark of the third quarter. It's 33-9. to Trinity Catholic trails. Well, the defense did exactly what they had to do. They got to stop. Now let's see if the offense can put some more points up on the board for Trinity Catholic. There will be three wide receivers. Check that. Four guys split wide. This time for Reed Carlton, the three-year starting quarterback for Trinity, out of the shotgun. And he's looking to Rudy Altar and overthrows him here on the near sideline. Altar was the one that caught that long 55-yard touchdown pass on the last possession and finally got Trinity Catholic in the end zone. <laughs> So second down and ten. Almost a full moon, partner. Not quite, but very, very close. I think we're a night or two late on that. I think it was uh, two nights ago. Out of the gun once again, it's Carl. Comes IMG on the blitz, and they get him. They got him on the blitz. Right behind the 15-yard line, and uh, Carlton started to try to scramble out of that, but couldn't get away. That's pretty easy. When you got five and they bring seven, it's pretty easy to get you. That's a numbers game. So that now makes it third down and 13 on a loss of three there on that sack. Clock ticking under four minutes to play third quarter. Trinity's in their 15. They need to get to their 28 for a first down. Carlton. Takes the snap. Dumps it off, and his intended receiver that time, Mark Franklin, was ran. open, but he ran into his own alignment right there and tripped up. Not able to make the catch. It ran right into the back of his lineman, tripped himself up, unable to bring the ball in. It's going to be fourth down and 13. The punting unit is in for the Trinity Catholic Celtics. And it will be Reed Carlton, who will kick it away. And he is supplanted right there at about his own one-yard line to take this snap. It's a little low. He's able to get it away, a high punt, but not much distance on it. It bounces at the 37 and takes an IMG bounce. It is down, but Reed Carlton took a massive pop right there. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. It's going to be an automatic first down. And Carlton is up to his feet now. Carlton was down for a moment and uh, didn't respond, but he's up now and walking off under his own power. 
And that will be a first down for Trinity Catholic. He took quite a pop right there in an exposed situation after that punch, Smitty. I just don't understand why you're starting quarterback. You expose him to that kind of situation where he could get injured as your punter. Nonetheless, Carlton going to suck it up and get out there for the first down play. As Trinity now will uh, move the chains and start this offensive possession all over again. First and ten from its own 30. 3.22 to play. Third quarter. They trail at 33-9. to nine. Here is the handoff to Franklin. No gain. How are they going to give her about a half a yard, partner? All right. Every little bit of help. Actually gave him a full yard on that one. Just about. Tackle made that time by Kyle Ford. Celtics in a hurry up here in the third quarter. Back to throw, and Carl is sandwiched right there in the backfield by a pair of linebackers. And brought down hard. There is no excuse for that. You only have a four-man rush. And the pocket breaks down like that. You had four rushing, seven drop back in coverage, and they were able to get the read Carlson quickly. And a loss of a good six on that play. As quick as they got to him, you thought it was a blitz. But it wasn't a blitz. It was just a four-down lineman with a good rush. Yep. So third and 16 now from the 24. That's Carlton out of the shotgun with four receivers. Throws to the far side. It's caught by Otar. Well short of even the original line of scrimmage, though. Going to be about a half yard short of the first of the original line of scrimmage. Well, the original, yep. So that'll bring up, what, uh, fourth and 11. And with 2.02 to play in the third quarter, it's still uh, punt time. And Ricky Carlson still back in there to punt. I just don't understand why you're starting quarterbacks in there at punter as well. They didn't start the game. As the punter. It was uh, Richie Denicola who was the punter initially, early in the game. He's one of the wide receivers. We haven't seen him in the game. so. And this time, Carlton, line drive punt right across midfield. Let's see where they spot this football. We have not seen Richie Denicola in the game uh, since the early stages, so we're not sure why, but... Uh, down to the 46 of IMG is where it got down to. Yep, so the ascenders will start first and 10 uh, from their own 46-yard line with a buck 30 to play third quarter. Insurance can be tricky. Not if you have insurance with the Kevin McDonald Allstate Agency. Call the McDonald Allstate Agency for all your insurance needs at 352-622-2333. That's 352-622-2333. And now back on the call, Tom James. Thank you, Tom Schmitz. Robert O'Connor out of the shotgun. Hands off. And it's Wager. Jack Wager running far side and picks up more than 10 yards. Let's give him 17, in fact, for the first down. Down to the 36 of Trinity Catholic. And you got to believe at this point is when the ascenders really start to try to milk that clock. It is definitely their friend as we tick late into the third quarter and head towards the fourth quarter, and they lead it 33-9 to over Trinity Catholic here at Celtic Field. We got a timeout injured Celtic. Coming gingerly off field number 21 for Trinity Catholic. Uh, Darren McNair. He's gingerly walking, gingerly walking off the field. Junior. Favor in that right leg just a little bit, but he's coming off under his own power. So first and ten at the 36. The handoff this time to Jack Wager again, but he has stopped in the backfield. He'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage that time. I think they're going to march him for a yard loss. Gilbert, one of those two terrific linebackers, Gilbert and Hendricks, for Trinity Catholic uh, on the tackle. And a half-yard loss that time. 
We're we're one or two plays away from the third quarter being in the history books. Yeah, we are under a minute. The clock ticking and running right now at 45-44. And Robert O'Connor is going to call timeout. O'Connor didn't like what he saw, called timeout. Let's take a 30-second timeout on the McDonald Allstate Agency, Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WLCA, The Source. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm the football your buddy fired through your windshield. The cooler that tumbled out of a pickup and onto the hood of your car. If you're a football fan, eventually we're going to meet. So get Allstate, where agents help keep you protected from mayhem. <laughs> like me. Are you in good hands? Hey, this is Kevin McDonald, your local Allstate agent. Call me at 622-2333 and let's make sure you're in good hands. We're back at Celtic Field on the campus of Trinity Catholic High School for IMG Ascenders versus the Trinity Catholic Celtics. Here on the play-by-play of the McDonald Agency, Friday night Marion County High School game of the week, Tom James. And, Schmitty, we've got our uh, crack stat man, Austin Statman, checking up on the uh, Marion County scoreboard for us. Bellevue is still leading east side, 21-20, second half. North Marion as O'Connor delivers to Wager over the middle. Down at the 25. It's going to be a first down IMG. Gain of 11 yards on the play. And this will probably be the final play if they decide to snap it of the third quarter for the Ascenders. O'Connor, again from the shotgun, handoff this time again to Jack Weger across the 20, down to about the 17. That'll do it for the third quarter as IMG Academy, with one quarter to play, leading Trinity Catholic 33-9, to and they'll switch in. Well, let's take a one-minute timeout on the Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week. Brought to you by the Kevin McDonald All-State Agency on WLCA, The Source. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. If you need a sign or a banner for your yard or your business or your campaign, I'd recommend you go to Signs Unlimited at 318 South Magnolia in Ocala. Screen printing, embroidery, digital graphics, do what I did when we needed signs for the Save the Marion Theater Group. Go see Vic Buttermore at Signs Unlimited if you want quality work with a fast turnaround from somebody who is deeply committed to his community and always ready to assist you. There's a reason Vic's slogan is, it's our business to make your business better. Sign up for Signs Unlimited. Call 732-7341 today. We're back at Trinity Catholic High School, Celtic Field, for the Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week, presented by the McDonald Allstate Agency. Here on the play-by-play call, Tom James. All right, as we start the fourth and final quarter here tonight, 33-9, to and IMG Academy leading Trinity Catholic. First and 10, ball on the 17-yard line. Again, the handoff to Jack Weger. He's running up the middle, across the 10-yard line. That's good for another first down. As they're eating up yardage and eating up the clock, the ascenders. Bo Scarborough, not the featured back on this drive. It's been Jack Wager. And Jack Wager, 5'9", all the way from Dakota Dunes, South Dakota. Yeah, I was there last week. <laughs> sure you were. So, first down and 10, this time from the 9-yard line. First down and goal, and here is Bo Scarborough. And he's running left, trying to turn the corner. Picks up about four. You know when you see him out at the 6-yard line. You know when you see a grown man that goes probably 6'3", 6'4", 
230. Throw the football she's holding down and run backwards to get out of the way of Mr. Scarborough. That's a big young man coming at you on the side. Yes, it is. Yeah, Bo Scarborough, of course, uh, from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And he has committed to Alabama. Alabama. Well, this kid, Jackson. And O'Connor uh, pitches to Scarborough, who tries to throw and misses his man in the end zone, Jarrell Scroggins. Okay, let me go ahead and be on the record as saying, Scarborough, don't quit your day job. <laughs> okay? <laughs> You look a lot more like Ken Tebow than Tom Brady right there. Yeah, well, that was Penn State pitching to Alabama as O'Connor pitched to Scarborough. Could have, or, uh, Scarborough could have kept it himself and easily gotten into the end zone. Sort of lopped one over the top, Tim Tebow style, to Scroggy, but overthrew him. And it yeah, the a- ball was knuckleballing. It looked just like something Tim Tebow threw. So third and goal now. Scroggy traditionally running left side, diving for the end zone. Touchdown. Their partner, I believe, is the exclamation point. And that is how many touchdowns for Mr. Scarborough tonight? That's one for the thumb. Five touchdowns on the ground. I fought four of them on the ground, and one of them he caught at Bo Scarborough. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Wow. As we await the exclamation point. As the boys from South Georgia will tell you, that's a bunch. Here is the kick. It is up. It is good. And your score from Celtic Field. 11 3 to play in the ball game. IMG Academy 40. Trinity Catholic 9. Now it's just about pride and respect from the Trinity Catholic team. And do they have what it takes to finish this game properly and keep their heads up and still play the game of football? Well, you're talking about a program in Trinity Catholic that has not one, not one, but two state titles. Played for four, yep. won two in a 10-year program history. The Celtics were state champions in 2005 and again in 2010, and runners-up in 06 and 08. I would dare say if this IMG school could qualify to play in the state playoffs, it would not be friendly to a lot of football teams. And remember, this is a team that's got talent put together from all over the country and in the world, actually. Yeah. But this is only their fourth game together. And they're doing this. So Rudy Otar at the goal. That was a and a nice spin and then a nice run by Rudy. Opened up by a block that was leveled by number 33 for Trinity Catholic. Great block that time by Noah Carmen. I mean, a, a, I need to check my shoulder pads to make sure there's still a catch to be blocked. So Otar's return to the 35, the 25 is where... Trinity will start first down to 10 with just under 11 minutes to play. That was the kind of block that will make a guy that took the guy to hit look down and say, is my number still there? <laughs> so three men split wide to the left, one to the right. Out of the shotgun, Robert O'Connor, or uh, excuse me, Reed called. So you can see O'Connor now. And they hand off that time to... Uh, number 19, Mark Franklin. Gain of about two. The Trinity Band playing the Michael Jackson Staple Thriller. They're doing it quite well, actually. Second down and eight. Called back to throw. Rolls to his left after he feels the pressure. Throws against his body way down here and out of bounds. It's caught by the IMG defender, Crumbie, but it's caught out of bounds. And Crumbie did have an interception in the first half. Reed Carlson takes a pop. Helmet off, crawling off the field, injured. Mm. That's tough to see. Carlton has uh, taken a lot of tough hits tonight.
And he is uh, still down near the sideline. Ryan Miller, the backup quarterback, has come into the game and is heading towards the huddle. As Reed Carlton, it's good to see he is up under his own power and walking off the field. He took a tough shot and looked like a, to the gut right there. He is bending over. So the backup quarterback now in there. It's Ryan Miller, the freshman. And hands off. Not surprisingly. Franklin. And little or no gain. In fact, he might have lost yardage, and that'll bring up fourth down. A loss of two on the play. So the punt team will come out, and uh, this is be interesting because uh, it's been Reed Carlton doing the punting for most of this game after the initial punter, Richie Tenicola, went out. So the third punter now, Dominic Brown, the third uh, punter in the game so far for Trinity Catholic, he will do the honors this time as... Trinity's got a punt away from it. So 25 and a low punt, uh, a low snap under, uh, between the legs of Brown, who is brought down inside the five-yard line. And a bad night just got worse. Dominic Brown, who had a couple of interceptions uh, on defense last week for Trinity Catholic, and the snap was low and right through his legs near the goal line. He was able to scoop it up. And was brought down right there at his own five-yard line. And so IMG Academy will start first and goal at the five. Well, partner, let me give you a good little bit of information. Reed Carlton on the sideline, throwing the football. Looks like he's going to go back into the football game if they go back on offense. All right. Got his helmet in his hand. He's ready to go back in. Bo Scarborough straight ahead, and he is stacked up by the Trinity Catholic defense that time. Led by Valentine, Mr. Gilbert. Terrific linebacking core that uh, Coach Brantley has. That's a loss of one for Bo Scarborough. Reed Carlton running up and down the sideline, helmet in hand, really not feeling any effects of that shot he took. That's a tough kid right there. Tough kid. Had a tough night. I guess a big defense. He's put a lot of pressure on him. And he's done the punting duties. O'Connor, back to throw, looks to the end zone, and it might have been intercepted. What is going to be the ruling right there? It is intercepted. They call that an interception, and they got that. 22 for Trinity. Billy Young comes up with the interception right there along the sidelines, had a foot in, had control. So Trinity will have the football first and ten at its own 20. And that's the first turnover of the night from IMT Academy. And 15 back in the game for Trinity. Great call. When do you start asking yourself, partner, in a 40-9 blowout with IMG now just selling out do you take your starter out so you don't get him hurt? No. When does that question start if, getting if asked? That, staff? If that question was asked, the answer was not now. So Reed Carlton taking a lot of shots. He's back in there. And he's going to keep it himself and take it right up the middle and take another couple of hard hits across the 25-yard line. But he's got a first down spitting. He delivered that hit to number 10 of IMG. IMG didn't give that to Reed Carlton. Reed Carlton gave that to number 10. And that may be one of those frustration hits. A correction on my part. Uh, that's a gain of about six on Carlton. And there's Maybe a little seven. barking going on now. A little barking. Yep. So short of a first down, but a, a nice gain by Carlton. Boy, he will feel this one tomorrow. And Carl, this time, bounces one to uh, Rudy Altar on the near side, incomplete. So it'll be third down and about three for Trinity Catholic. 
at their own 28 yard line. As Reed Carlton scampers back out with the play. Third down, and a really a long two this time. And Carlton going to operate again out of the shotgun. He's got four wide receivers, two to the right, two to the left. Here's the snap, and Carlton's just going to keep it himself. Can he get there? No, but he might come by, and I, I think it's maybe a horse that. collar. Or, 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 well, a horse collar way he grabbed him around the neck. It's one of the two. Personal foul horse collar. It is a horse on collar. On IMG. So, Reed Carlton, boy. You know what that would have been called 25 years ago, partner? A uh, heckling tackle. Yeah. <laughs> Many a night, this linebacker grabbed somebody by the collar of their shoulder pads and threw them to the ground. It's not the same game, is it? It's, it's a much weaker game. So, first down and 10 from their own 45 as they move the chains and call out of the shotgun. Throws near side, Rudy Altar. Just shy of the 50, but he catches it, and it'll be a gain of about four. I'm going to be honest with you, partner. 25 years ago, the way the rules have changed in football now, I've coached tougher powder puff games than they play now. <laughs> well, not the player's fault, but... Uh, well, it's safety reasons. Obviously, there's, 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 there's a reason behind it. There's a, re- there's, a, there's, a re- there's a reason that I keep repeating myself sometimes. <laughs> So a gain of uh, four, second down at six. Carlton looking to throw. He's got Rudy again across the 50. He's going to be short of the first down by about two yards. Rudy Altar. And they're going to mark it at the 46. It'll be third and a long one. Yeah. With under seven minutes to play, 40 to nine, IMG Academy leading Trinity Catholic. This game's over, Parker, score-wise. It's already got the, we already know who's going to win this football game. Now Trinity Catholic's playing just to play the game of football and not lay down. And I'll tell you one guy that's not laying down, and if he is, he keeps getting back up as Carlton. Maybe he hands it off to number 19, Mark Franklin. And Mark Franklin's going to get the tonight. first down. Let's see. So where, the, where the official standing, it is a first down. Awful close. But that is the first down. You know, we're going to have to award line. We're going to have to award a player to game to one of these Trinity Catholic players. I think I know who already who I got as player to game. Well, I, I can't Catholic. imagine. It's going to be real tough. Uh, player is real tough. I'll give you that. Yeah, we'll have to think about this one. Here's Carlton back to throw again out of the gun. And again under pressure and again brought down about a four-yard loss this time as Carlton sacked that time by number 92, Kyle Ford. That's two sacks so far from Ford. And his second sack of the game. As we tick the clock ticking now down towards six minutes to play in the ball game. Second down and thirteen. Carl. Four wide receivers. Rudy Altar drops it. He was covered tightly that time by uh, number twenty nine, Jamorian Hill. It's going to be third and about 13. Ball spotted on the IMG 47. With 5.47 to play in the game. Coach Brantley told us IMG was finding it hard to find people that wanted to play them. I think I understand why now. Yeah. So here is... And a deep throw, and it's caught. Dominic Brown, touchdown. Reed Colton had players draped all over him when he made the throw. Under all kinds of pressure, but he was able to see and deliver the ball to Dominic Brown. 47-yard touchdown pass. And Brown, Brown was out behind the defense. That one kind of snuck up on IMG. And a 47-yarder for the touchdown, Carlton to Brown. I told you they're playing for pride now, partner. Well, the Trinity uh, fan base is still largely still here. 
And we heard him that time. Here's the extra point. It's up and good, and so it's 40 to 16 with 5.38 to play in the ballgame. Insurance can be tricky. Not if you have insurance with the Kevin McDonald Agency. Call the McDonald Agency for all your insurance needs at 352-622-2333. That's 352-622-2333. Do you want to help find the answers to tomorrow's medical questions today? Renstar Medical Research is doing just that. If you want to be part of an important medical study with Renstar, call 352-629-5800. For more information. And now back on the play by play for the Marion County Friday Night High School Game of the Week brought to you by the McDonald Allstate Agency. Here's Tom James. So, Tom Schmitz, 538 left in the game. IMG Academy comfortably in front of Trinity Catholic, 40 to 16. And the turnovers uh, that we saw so much of from Trinity in the first half. Non existent in the second half. Second half. Uh, but uh, it really was the biggest reason why it dug Trinity in, into such a hole that they've not been able to get out of. No. There's another reason why Trinity Catholic is in such a deep hole as well. I got two words for you Bo Scarborough. He has really showed why he is a commit, a commit to the University of Alabama. That's right. Not only because he's a Tuscaloosa native. And they're going to kick it along the ground, and it's fielded uh, at about the 27-yard line by Crumpy, who is dragged down. He can never find any running room that time, dragged down about the 26. With under five and a half to play in the game. Now Trinity Catholic, if they want to try to make this a game, which is still way too late now, but now they've got to go ripping at the football. As the Trinity Catholic band plays outcast. And we've got a, uh, another score update in the Citrus Forest game. Late third quarter, Citrus 42 and Wildcats 7. Do we have an update on the Villages football game? Austin Tapman doesn't even want to let us know what that may be. Don't have that one. Here's the handoff. And a backup running back this time, Mike Daniel. Another South Dakota kid right there, uh, Brookings, South Dakota. They've got a couple of running backs from South Dakota. Partner, the clock approaches five minutes. We talked about it at the uh, top of the broadcast. Uh, of course, Chris Winky, uh, former Florida State quarterback, the head coach, E.G. Green, the former uh, Florida State wide receiver, is the offensive coordinator for IMG Academy. Only one local kid from the Bradenton area on the entire roster. Here's Daniel again. Mike Daniel across the 30, up towards the 34-yard line. It's going to be bring up fourth and about three. Check that. Well, it's third and three. Third and three. From the 34. And here's the handoff. It's Daniel once again. And nice move. He may have the first down. Boy, that is going to be awful close. He would have marked you. Yeah, stacked up by that Trinity defense. A herd of Celtics brought him down, and uh, they're giving him the first down. <laughs> it is awfully close, but uh, they're going to move the chains. The ball marked at the 37-yard line. With Very strange how they do this in high school football. The head referee looks over to the line judge, and if the line judge on this on the far side of the field, away from the chain, decides it's a first down, the referee calls it a first down. Very seldom do we see measurements. Have we seen measurements at all this season? A couple of times, tops. Under four minutes now. Busted play. Busted play, and he's just going to throw this one away. Michael O'Connor, the starting quarterback, still in the game. Was looking to hand that ball off. Turned around. There were no running backs to hand the ball. Anybody there? So he just tossed it out of bounds towards the IFG Academy bench with 3.51 left to play in the game. 40 to 16, IMG on top of Trinity Catholic. 
second down and 10. Ball just across the 36-yard line. Trips to the near side, partner. Yep. Three wide receivers, near side, one to the far side. We're going to have an encroachment. Looks like that will be against Trinity. Or let Broke somebody move it on. on the other side. It's going to be offside Trinity. <clears throat> the ball moved up to the 41-yard line. So, second down and five. O'Connor back to throw. Throws near side, overthrow, looking for Thomas. Never had a chance at that one, and it winds up in the Trinity Catholic bench. Brings up third and five. So third and five with 3.46 to play. Remember, we did get a 7 o'clock start, so we're well ahead of the other games in the area. Yes. So O'Connor this time with Thomas in motion. From under center, on the ground, oh. the score boy drops it, but O'Connor, his backfield buddy, able to fall on that. He pitched it to Mike, uh, to Bo Scarborough, who seemed like really no reason to have dropped it, just took his eye off that ball, dropped the football, and it went right, up, right to where O'Connor was, and he jumped right on it. Scarborough may have been looking up the field to try to pick his hole, trying to maybe get a long run for a sick touchdown of the night. Yeah. Took his eye off the pitch, and the ball was put on the carpet. <clears throat> that does absolutely nothing to change what Scarborough has done tonight as they punt it away. And Young takes it across midfield to the 45, and that's where Trinity Catholic will start first and 10 with 2.57. They actually mark it at the 44, partner. All right. So uh, as we tick down towards the end of the game, we... Uh, draw closer to the point in time when we name our Harley-Davidson player of the game. The Harley-Davidson Ocala player of the game. Little or no doubt as to who that might be. I think I know the Trinity Catholic player that's going to receive player of the game, but it'll be no happiness as player of the game because I'm sure he'd take a win over getting player of the game. That's right. And it's pitched back and fumbled. It was uh, Dominic Brown. Never had a handle on that. It is scooped up by number five. By five. Andrew Smith, and he takes it all the way for the touchdown. And there's that turnover that we hadn't seen in the second half. Reed Carl looked to pitch it back to Brown, and just as Bo Scarborough fumbled a pitch the last time, and uh, the damage was limited because IMG jumped on its own fumble this time. A fumbled pitch is scooped up by IMG, and they rumble all the way for the score. You know what I find very, very heartening, though? The Trinity Catholic faithful, even though they're down 46-16, stands. Nobody's leaving the stand. They're hanging around here watching football. They're all still hanging around. And the kick is up and good. So it's 47-16, IMG Academy, with 2.43 to play in the game. We'll have the end of the game stats for you, brought to you by Austin Statman Tatman at the end of the game. He's still keeping the stats, I believe. He's got it all in his head. He, he didn't even have to write it down. He's one of those savants. He's just got it all, uh, he just rattled it off to you. He's a talent. He is? I don't know, know, don't know what the talent is, but he's a talent. So. Insurance can be tricky. Not if you have insurance with the Kevin McDonald Agency. Call the McDonald Agency for all your insurance needs at 352-622-2333. That's 352-622-2333. And now here, back on the play-by-play, to take us the rest of the way 
Tom James. All right, Schmitty, thank you. As the harvest moon straight across to the west or to the east of us, excuse me, is uh, getting higher in the sky. We just collect about 940 Eastern. Yep. And the uh, side of the scoreboard that uh, reads IMG Academy is getting higher as well, that number. 47 to 16 with 243 to play as IMG kicks it off. And into the end zone as Trinity Catholic will take this one first and 10 at its own 20. And now you start seeing people starting to leave for the parking lot. So we'll see if Reed Carlton comes back into the game for this possession. And he is set to. Been uh, quite a long night for Carlton. He's taken a lot of hits, been under a lot of pressure. I, I, pr I promise you, partner, this makes no sense to me. You're down 31 points, 243 to go in the game. Why not put some of your younger kids in there to get them the experience? Yep. Make sure your starter's healthy for district play. John Braley's won two state titles. It's hard to question his reasoning. But then it's a handoff and gone is number 32, Johnny Taylor. They won't catch him, and they do catch him. He's tripped up just inside the five-yard line. I thought Taylor was gone. But Johnny Taylor takes it 76 yards to the three-yard line. Mike Daniels, 26, where IMG never gave up on the play. Shoe streak caught him by the Achilles heel at the three-yard line. I thought for sure that Taylor would not be caught. Parker, that's what's known in the football world as an old-fashioned foot race. Taylor won it for about 70-plus yards. Taylor was never touched until he got inside the five. So first and goal at the three. And the handoff. And a loss of one. Back to the five-yard line. Lost yeah, a couple two yards. Line. Yeah. Mark Franklin that time. So again, uh, it has the bulk of the carries. And we're under two minutes, partner. You know, fourth game of the season, and I, I don't feel like I'm going to jinx it now. It's been a really well officiated football game. Oh, boy. And Taylor up the middle. And the ball comes loose, but it's going to down and down. goal line. Taylor near the goal line, probably brought down, and they probably spotted at the one-yard line. So it's third and goal. That ball is about a quarter of a yard from crossing the plank. So, yeah. That's about on the one foot line. This is where you just, for, for Celtic pride, you push this into the end zone. So under a minute left now. The clock ticking at 54-53, and here's third and goal from the one foot line. They give it to Johnny Taylor, who is <laughs> down. A loss of one on that play. And the clock is rolling under 45 seconds. And it's fourth and goal from the two. 35 seconds and ticking. So Carlton going back out there for one more shot at it. Fourth down. This is Celtic pride right here. Just try to get it in the end zone, finish this game on a positive note. Well, in this game on something that's positive. Fourth and goal. We're all seconds, 11, and they snap it. They give it to Johnny Taylor, who throws it into the end zone, Tim Tebow style. It is caught for the touchdown by Max Linder. How about that? That's a good play, and that's the positive you need to go into. Now you can say we ended the game strong yep. with a touchdown. This is to Johnny Taylor. Who drew the defense in just enough and did the to jump pop pass. it right over the top to the jump pass. 6.6 6 seconds to go. So Max Linder on the reception of the 
Johnny Taylor pass. And the kick is up and good, and it's 47-23, to 23, which is likely where we will end this thing. Oh, no, Notre Dame. <laughs> I hope Notre Dame, you gotta love this, Tom. The Notre Dame fight song playing. You being the big Notre Dame fan, you are. But, yeah. It's also the Celtic fight song. Again, it's a long way down, Schmidt. <laughs> don't you just, don't you just get visions of Rudy Rudiger? You may, <laughs> not me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy Catholic. Uh, Didn't score the most tonight, but maybe it may be the last to score. Yes, it's 47 to 23, IMG. They have come to Celtic Field.